Wake up, gamers, because you're listening to the Big Thing to Mention with Dan and Bob Video Games. Nintendo bankrupted after $300 million spent on Quest 64. Two. Why? Chris Wolfhard. I'm the unknown and I live in the walls. And Dr. Agro. No, no, it's an industry bandicoot? Here on Gigaboots. You know what's a real Crash Team Rumble? The fucking news segment this week! Uh, yeah. Oh my god! <sighs> you know, I'm glad we're here talking to you, viewer, because I don't... <laughs> I don't I don't think elsewise I would even want to talk to, this, <laughs> to anyone about this week's news. <laughs> I'd just be like, I'm pretending it's not happening, I'm pretending it's not happening, I'm pretending it's not happening. <laughs> That seems to be the opinion of most people in the industry at, this, at the current point in time. But that's a real negligent position to have when you're in the industry itself. Oh my god, video game industry commentators and pundits are willfully negligent? <laughs> what? Never. What? I mean, I, I get the idea of ignoring something bad you have absolutely no capacity to affect. <laughs> I don't know how healthy that is on the long term. Yeah, especially when it will directly affect you, right? <laughs> I feel like maybe you have some sort of obligation to point things out, even if not like for the hope of affecting it, but for informing people about it coming. Hey, here's a quick question. Do you think this will be another big thing to mention where we get a comment that goes, why do they say the Western game industry is crashing? <laughs> <laughs> do you think it'll is, is we stand well, out here basically is, looking at the like Terminator 2 Nuxi. Right, no, we're at the chain lane fence. <laughs> this is tired. Well, this is No, no, they made a bunch of tough decisions to lean out their processes to avoid the crash. <laughs> That's how that you works. fired half the industry so the crash wouldn't happen. It was a, <laughs> it was a tough decision, but we we made it through. And that that doesn't qualify as a crash. A, 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 see, a crash is when nothing in that industry exists at all anymore, even though that's not how any crash in human history has ever functioned. Or, <laughs> right. or it's not Just a crash like, because because I'm a, I'm a pedant, and here's my semantic argument on why you shouldn't use the word crash. For reasons I won't explain, the real reason is it makes me cry. Bob, did you <laughs> plug our headphones into Twitter? <laughs> Just like a car crash is when two cars collide and both disappear. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Big Thing Dimension number 262. And that feels like the number of times in a row we've had to talk about horrible industry practices. But it's only been about 80 to 100. <laughs> That's all. That's all. It's only been a little over a year to two years that we've had to deal with. Wow, this is uh, head and... Heading somewhere fast. Yeah, you know what? That's a good question. Is, is the industry taking practices from Thanos? Would that count as a galactic crash? <laughs> yeah. Is that a universal? He's like, no, we did not crash. I'm very good at this. <laughs> this was all part of the plan. I don't know. It seems like you arbitrarily <laughs> fired half of the company. <laughs> uh, it wasn't easy. <laughs> These decisions would be a lot easier to take from Embracer if we saw the CEO as the guy. <laughs> He's there, I am inevitable guy in the back. Like, no, there were many avenues we could have taken to avoid this horseshit. <laughs> and masterfully, you dodged the ball. <laughs> well done, my grace. <laughs> um, anyways, hey, what's up? We got some news to talk about later. Uh, you know, I'll go ahead and get my impressions of this thing out of the way right up front. Let me just do, I have the button on this screen. I have to go to the other screen? Wow, I didn't prepare it yet. Wow, that's that's crazy. Okay, so uh, one second, we're going to get right into what we've been playing with uh, me, you know, sitting here with the... Uh, Game code provided by Square Enix. Uh, but chat decided I shouldn't play Seven <laughs> Rebirth, so we played Mario Sunshine all the way through. <laughs> what a nightmare. Chat, why, 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 why? 
Why? The real question is, why did you give that to them as an option? I, why, right? did you, we, we why did you go all the way through <laughs> we, it? Why we, was we, any of this the case? We beat our Zet, and I was like, chat, you get the choice. Can I enjoy an hour or two of Seven Rebirth? Maybe get some sleep or and get I to play, play five hours of Mario Sunshine? <laughs> like, a guy hands a toddler a gun and goes, oh no, what did this toddler do? <laughs> this mass murderer is <laughs> loose in my house. Next time, next time you should just give them virtual bard again fuck it no <laughs> it'd be no. faster He's it right. would be faster it would be faster even especially though the I... more times you do it it would just get faster and faster but the same is true of sunshine <laughs> but the bottom is much lower on virtual bard there are no death playthroughs <laughs> of that game that are 25 minutes long that's true <laughs> there's i mean you're talking over 25 minutes of cutscenes playing mario sunshine yes so anyways, uh, I look forward to giving you some actual impressions of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth next week. Because as it turns out, I don't spend every day of my life voting chat. Should I have a good time or play Mario <laughs> Sunshine? Yeah, you, you limit that to Fridays. <laughs> uh, last, last Friday, we played Quest 64. God, I was trying to remember. What a completely hollow, empty skeleton of a game. That game, that game, that game has some sort of sinister energy. Watching you play it, I'm like, I should get the Mr. Core running and play it. <laughs> I don't know why. It just has some dark power where it's like you strip it down, you strip a real video game down into like the barest bones, and it has some sort of evil energy now. Yeah, you put a real game into a shredder and picked up half the shreds and was like. I'm good to like release this, right? <laughs> this is a game, and it's like falling out. Yeah, of your hands. it's just a bunch of strands. <laughs> uh, Quest sixty four is somebody looked at a two D RPG specifically and went, "We're going to make this in three D," but then didn't fill it out and made the spaces really big. So Quest sixty four feels like Death Stranding because it's a dead world. <laughs> There's virtually it's no one in it, and they're all indoors. <laughs> It's like an even, like, I, I, I've brought up a bunch of times, like, how certain, how, like, fifth gen RPGs are bizarre because in some way they'll be really advanced and then, like, in every other way they'll be, like, Dragon Quest 1. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. This is, like, the most extreme I've ever seen that <laughs> phenomenon because before this, my, my big example of that was Guardian, Crus Guardian's Crusade on PS1. Mm. But that's so much more of a finished game. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. As I, it oh. turns out, we were we played a lot of seven gen games on the channel. We we played a lot of seven gen, gen games in general. That gen is one of the most notorious for a game that shipped that wasn't done, <laughs> and somehow we struggled for I think an hour to think of a game anywhere near as not done as Quest sixty four. Yeah, there's it's an RPG that has basically no story. You have a few NPCs to talk. It has no cutscenes. They have. It has no cutscenes. You talk to an NPC, and then when the dialogue box finishes, it will teleport you somewhere else. That's their version That's of a cutscene. That's the scene. fanciest way they can do a cutscene. Just to be clear, chat. The best parallel we could find by the end of the playthrough is I went. It's like an RPG maker game. Your friend is showing the you that they're working on, and they haven't figured out how to despawn characters or do cutscenes. <laughs> Yeah, you That's, seriously, you talk to someone who has something important to say, and then they're like, well, I'll meet you in the next room. And you have to go walk there. They don't move. They're like, they ha, don't ha, even ha. teleport. I was the mastermind this whole time, and I beat up this guy in the room before you got in the room, so you can talk to him about how I beat him up. You will see what the Dark Lord has for you. And they don't do anything. Yeah, so then you talk to the guy there. on the floor, and they're like, oh, main character Brian. Oh, God. They beat me up, and you shouldn't be here. I missed you. Oh, oh, no. And then you leave the room, and two rooms later, that person's in there again. They're like, ha, ha, you will truly see what the Dark Lord has in store for you. And uh, yeah, no. So the best the best comparison is RPG Maker friend game your friend is working on that they don't understand how to get the features working. Literally every boss they have an intro dialogue. They talk to you for like two power or two sentences. Didn't you just kill them? Like yeah. they don't have anything when they die. They yeah, can't. No, they have to figure out how to program that. There's no like dying phrase from anyone except for maybe the absolute final boss. I, I can't don't even, even remember. think he got one. 
Quest 64 is an incredible <laughs> game. Reminder, it's one of the like three RPGs on the N64 because you got Paper Mario that and I'm leaving room for a third one to be out there. Uh, I believe Hybrid Heaven is an RPG. So there you go. I believe, but it's not not normal RPG at all. No, Hybrid Heaven is very much an immersive sim adjacent RPG where it's just like, these systems are weird, bro. What is this game? Was, was Hybrid Heaven the one where you like you like have RPG fist fights? I believe so, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I've always been interested in that game since I saw read about it in a magazine, but then I'm like, oh right, it's an N64 game. There was like eight months after I got an N64 purely for two Zelda games where I was open to playing other N64 games and then never again. <laughs> uh, a bunch of people listed strategy games pretending they're RPGs. That's not, that's a different genre. That's a, Ogre Battle's a different genre. Um, and then somebody said Aiden Chronicles, and I'm not, like, I don't actually know what that game is, and I'm I'm worried now. It's huh. not Auden. Yeah, no, I, I just read that. I was like, did they typo Auden? No, and also, I don't even remember if that's an N64 game. My brain just goes, yeah, that's a thing that existed around then that I did not play. Sheeran the Wanderer 2 came out on N64, but Japan only. Yeah, okay, like, so as an American RPG fan, the N64 was dire. Quest 64 did not help. Did we even get a Fire Emblem in the States? I don't think we, we did. did no, not. Um, yeah. uh, God, Path of Radiance, the one, the first GameCube one. Well, the mm -hmm. only GameCube one, because the other one was Wii. Yep. Um, was supposed to be in 64. Oh. And you can tell, because all the models are barely updated from... <sighs> that explains. Yeah, I wonder where that game looked so ugly. Man. Man. Yeah, because they still kept putting them out on SNES even deep into the N64 era. I think... Um, didn't they make one or two during the N64? I think I think Fire Emblem Five is yeah. the like the latest released Super Nintendo game because I think it was 1999. Yeah, they kept chugging on that. I was really impressed when I found that out. Um, so yeah, if you're an N64 fan, Quest 64 is not your friend. No. It's not here to solve a problem. It's here to make you feel even worse. But Quest 64, as an experience, is one of the most depressing games. Because once again, it's like Death Stranding. It's practically a dead world. No one's alive in it. Most rooms are empty. The, the, the encounter rate's insane. A lot of times, there'll be two steps. Here's an encounter. Yeah. yeah you have you... no equipment. Yeah. yeah no. You have no items outside of... They didn't, want to, they didn't want to balance consumables, so you don't have stores. <clears throat> Inns will just give you whatever the... Uh, the one item they want to give you is if you don't have it. So like, If you don't have... The only way to have more than one healing item is to carry one already and find a chest with another one in it. And then hopefully not open or use it ever because <laughs> then it's not like the shopkeep will give you the one back that they gave you before. No, you have one. You're fine. Instead uh, of... And instead of... Uh, and instead of equipment, Brian can just eat an amulet and have double defense for one battle, except it doesn't work on any bosses, so it's completely worthless. Yeah, also stats work like Final Fantasy II, basically, where uh, to raise your defense, you get the shit beaten out of you. And it's the amount of times you're hit, not the damage you're hit for. Uh, to raise your agility, you run around a lot during battle. Um yeah yeah <laughs> you have uh four elements of magic and they all unlock different spells but only two of them are good actually so just get water and then after that get earth water to 25 earth to 50 and they're, they're obviously npcs that were meant to be party members you find throughout the world they don't move <laughs> God, there's so few characters in this game and like it feels like a large number of these npc models are obviously the des these designed characters they thought would be in your party uh-huh it's depressing it's a depressing video game like the first major town you get to is like oh man that that rumbalcious princess who's always going around fighting guys She's sure getting in trouble and maybe going after the same guy you are, or maybe she's standing in her room doing nothing. And as it turns out, <laughs> it's always that one. <laughs> she's, in fact, always in her room doing nothing. Uh, I was really depressed because uh, there's been a lot of hype about Shilf uh -huh. uh, from uh, Foxandra, famously from Foxandra.gay. Uh, 
And I understand the model was, they used Chilf in the marketing material. She's like, <laughs> oh, yeah. In the like the N64 commercial and stuff, like she's the Pilot Wings character. There's and a I really. Fucking commercial for this game? Yeah. Nintendo would let you have marketing materials. And Man, this they was just their let counter you to Final Fantasy anything back then. Uh huh. Yeah, no, they really gave you a lot of rope if you sheep shipped on the N64. So. I didn't understand Shilf is just a boss that you beat in the boss fight and then she's dead. Yeah. I don't I, I think she said one sentence. And it was like, oh. But we did C find her, I believe in hard. I I feel like <laughs> I feel like we found her in the goon cave. I might be wrong. Yeah, the Barra Goon <laughs> Tunnel. Which, man, even five years ago that would have hit different. <laughs> All right. But uh yeah, no. Coast 64 is uh, depressing. There's a completely optional temple that's a pyramid out in the desert. It's a giant open desert, and the trick is to go find the pyramid, and then that takes you to a parallel universe pyramid, and you go in there, and you, you get you open some chests, and you fight a bunch of random encounter battles, and then there's one person in there who's like, yeah, this should be something, but it isn't. And then you leave. That's... Yeah. They can't give you equipment, so what's the point of a side objective explorable area? Uh it sounds like a like this is the kind of video game people should get isekai trapped in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I appreciated my old life so much more now. Oh right. God, <laughs> Jesus! S sent, sent to another world where they didn't fucking finish it. <laughs> just, just standing next to the rambunctious princess who neither blinks, breathes, nor moves, <laughs> like Will Smith and I Am Legend. Please say hello to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'd watch that. Yeah. yeah no, that's Jesus. good. That's good. <laughs> God, that's so fucked up and depressing. I don't want to get you sick on the quest 64. No. Because no. the most people who feel alive, you kill. Because <laughs> they can move uh -huh. and they talk at the beginning of the battle, they do things. But you have to kill them 10 seconds later. Uh, that one king has two different sets of dialogue because you talk to him before you kill the bandit and then he's like, then he uh, has a different line for after you kill a bandit. Bob, in 19, That's incredible. In 1999, I had a yak back that could do four different sounds. <laughs> <laughs> Was it alive? Yeah, it's worse. It's so much worse than Dragon Quest 1. It's insane. <laughs> yeah, no, we played the Dragon Quest one so recently. <laughs> and it just feels fucked up how much we're done. And like, like, that feels alive. Remember when you, like, saved the princess and have to walk her back? Yeah, that was, that was, that was more, hype. That was more advanced than anything in Quest 54. <laughs> yeah, no, that was, that was really hype. That's despicable. That's unbelievable. We're, we're going to we're gonna have to regress to the beginning of <laughs> something you can recognize as firmly in the JRPG genre era beginning and just roll back to, how about Ultima 1? Right. Can Quest 64 stand up against <laughs> Ultima 1? What's that? There's equipment. Okay, never mind. I'll sit down. <laughs> I'm glad we played it through. I could not imagine the feeling of depression I got playing through Quest 64. It is so empty. I've never played a game as skeletal. I, it's so bizarre too because there's like an insane amount of stuff that's made just it took us what seven hours eight hours something like that to get through this game yeah they made a, a huge amount of environmental art a huge amount of enemy art and it feels just wasted you would you would hit this you, you would get to the bottom of this like icy cave like thing and then you'd hit a cottage where there's an old lady she's like yeah i need the thing Go to the circle of stones outside and do the thing. So you step into the circle and teleports you to a thing. You do that thing real quick. It's just like a really small set of battles. You come back and then she goes, okay, in the other rooms are teleported to continue on the story because we don't know how to get you out of this cave elsewise. <laughs> and that happened twice. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? That's actually a really good comparison. What about Highlight? And it's like, you know... Highlight, virtual Highlight, is out years before Quest 64, I'm pretty right, sure. Right, almost certainly. And that game whips in comparison. It also feels more alive. I like yeah, when this, we... Quest 64 has the energy of, like, 
the seventh gen RPGs, like the 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 period where it was the most dire. Like I like I look at Quest sixty four and I think of like Cross Edge. <laughs> I look at Quest sixty four and think of Cross Edge. <laughs> this. Yeah, that's that's a mm. sentence. Except Cross Edge at least had characters talking to each other because the whole conceit was that it was a crossover. Right, game. right. Yeah. Maybe what what is that game? Last Rebellion. I actually don't know a lot about Last Rebellion. I've always seen the box. That that I think is is probably closer to what to the level of Hollow that Quest sixty four presents as its Quest primary paradigm. Yeah. yeah. I like the point where we got in, we went to one of those teleporters that's in someone's back room uh -huh. and we appear on a ship and then the captain of the ship's like, yeah, I'm pirating out here on this lake, but the water's really bad. You should go inside the ship so that we can get somewhere. So then you go inside the ship and then come back outside the, the door in the ship and now the ship is docked. The, the extra depressing part of that, Bob, is that's the second time that happened because you journey across this giant <laughs> landmass of a chunk into this game, let's say a fourth, and then you get to this boat and the boat's like, oh, well, I'm going to take you to another continent. You step in a room and nothing happens. You step out of the room, you're at the other continent. I'm like, <laughs> how do i get back so i used an item to return to the castle on the first continent because i passed up a thing i wanted and i travel all the way back to the ship and he says the same fucking thing he's like get in these. we're gonna travel to the new continent get in this. so i go in the room <laughs> and nothing happens and i come back out i'm on the new continent i'm like god god this is an rpg maker game this isn't done yeah you and he was you try to go back and by normal means like using the boat again he's just like uh the water's too rough we can't go back So does this have any cutscenes? No, I didn't figure out how to do that in RPG Maker yet. <laughs> yeah, no. It was, that's too this complicated. The first draft. It's like all condition state teleports, like somebody makes the very end of a JRPG past the final save point, so that way it's cool. It's just, you know, like, oh, you step into the hallway, uh, the, 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 the pathway of mirrored crystal in the darkness and then you teleport to the final area to look at cool stuff before you but that's like the whole game the whole time and it's like i would like to go back and they're like no <laughs> Just, no oh man oh man oh man i it has never been as dire since or before quest 64 that is a firm belief i feel like we found the anchor for one aspect of video games just not being done this is it <laughs> yeah like like it's a way we've described a lot of games especially seventh gen games but the, quest 64 feels like somebody stole it <laughs> <laughs> yes damn it what's up todd somebody got into our server room and stole the game soul <laughs> it's gone <laughs> what about the equipment system fucking gone <laughs> and that's quest 64 oh uh yeah i guess i should Tell the story here. Thank you, Jeff, for reminding me. Um, yeah, we were supposed to stream Sonic Chronicles, as we mentioned on last week's Big Think, and right before the stream, because USB Micro is the worst interface ever invented, uh, the 3DS capture unit, which never worked great, they're all they're all bitches. None of them are good. Kill them all. Uh, 3DS capture unit this time, rapid fire connected and disconnected, overwrote the EEPROM with a DRM product key. And broke it. The Fabulous. D, the DRM. It's in on this, my capture unit. On this capture unit that's already in a legally gray area. Well, to in make, Japan. In Japan to make. But they made it before that, so I don't get the relevance of that. But It's, it's like this first, the, the thought of some random guy making a DS capture unit has DRM. Yeah. That DRM is supposed to be something relegated to evil giant corporations. Yes. To make people's lives worse. Right. And this random idiot did yeah. this. Uh-huh. Did you ever, did I, you ever I, find the pictures of the invoice that you supposedly took? Uh, no, I didn't scan my iPhone for the date that it arrived and then look through my pictures, which is what I'll have to do. Maybe you could fix it if you successfully, if it has the product. Okay, key. and then it does it again. 
Reminder, it, it was never good. Hell. No, I this thing, you don't understand the 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 tower of cards this thing has always been. There is a very I, custom driver that only works on our laptop. Only and some if of the times. you update your it, computer, it ruins it for what a yeah, fucking my, device. My main desktop cannot work with our DS capture unit because the specific drivers for it say you cannot let Windows touch this or it will break it. What? At this point, you're it's less a capture unit and more like a mystical artifact where you right. have to follow a ritual to get it to work and it doesn't always. Yeah, and unfortunately, a poison tip spear came out of the wall and stabbed me instead. Hey, here's an idea. What if you put an actual video out on this thing? Then we would have no problems. No. So anyway... There are a number of ideas we're postulating. I've sent out emails to see what things look like. We'll see. But hey, people start bringing up, you remember for like a year or so there, I was like, we should just get one of these dev units with the video out. Yeah. People brought that up and I'm like, well, if you look at the price history and the fact there are none on the market, that would cost us like 10 grand nowadays. So, no. Yeah. Sonic Chronicles is not worth 10 grand to me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's worth that grand to anyone. <laughs> right. But yeah, anyways, I'm looking into it. The uh, There's only, it seems like there's only one, maybe two guys still standing in the DS capture unit field. And the one in the States, it's now using USB Type-C. And since 99.9% .9 repeating problems we've ever had with the capture unit was USB Micro. And I don't know why it took until the year 2023 to think, should we put a USB Type-C on this? There's a chance that would work fine. And as much it can never work fine. Yeah, because even when this thing is working fine, it has constant frame drops and all that junk. Oh, yeah, no, but it would be a video out. Yeah. I'm not saying it would capture all the <laughs> frames. No, they made the device wrong. It simply just doesn't send all the frames. A thing that fundamentally should make you go, I have made this product wrong. Somehow, is it understood like, yeah, why would you need all the frames? The Pokemon games don't render 60 frames. <laughs> just drop them at random. Even though it managed to even make like 6th gen look worse by the amount of frames it was dropping in Sun and Moon. Uh-huh. Which you can go watch Pokemon Days to see those streams and hear me occasionally say that out loud and being like, damn, this looks much better on the actual unit because it's not dropping random frames at a random pace. Man, you know, if, if, if I won the Powerball, I feel like the first thing I do is, yeah, I'm opening a, re a retro hardware company where I hire real engineers and destroy the entire retro hardware industry. Yeah, it feels yeah. like you could probably accomplish that. Probably. I, I feel like our options are that or, hey, we could solve the DS problem if someone out there puts forth the effort to get a portable FPGA that's strong enough. Because it's just, what is it, an ARM7 and an R9 processor? I can't remember exactly, but this is not an impossible problem to accomplish. <laughs> it's just you need to set forth to do it. There was some kind of thing at, at, at some tech show in Japan last year where it's like, here's our, yeah, here's that our, was, our DS thing. Yeah, the weird thing was they were trying to pitch, if we're talking about the same thing, which we may not be. Uh, I remember there was a thing last year of like, oh, some Japanese company made an FPGA console that's strong enough to do all these things. And then you look it up and it's like, oh, it actually says here it's an emulator. Never mind. Huh. It's like, yeah, I don't know. Happens. I. I, I saw some big, some two screen thing that's like, yeah, we're doing a DS thing. So I don't know if that's FPGA or. Yeah, I would love later. I'd love a solution in this space, especially one that doesn't cost $10,000 because I'm not spending $10,000 no matter how much I love uh, the DS Castlevanias. Oh, and it sucks, that the, it sucks that the DS consoleizer is dead. Well, it seems like the it's other people who are working on the team for it are still continuing some of the work, even though they're not talking about it. For people who don't know, the lead on the DS Consoleizer project actually passed late last year. So that's how dire this whole situation is. <laughs> even the people who were trying to solve it and didn't... Because there are multiple people who said they were trying to solve it. And then they just went off and did other things. Mm. Like the person who made the Game Boy consoleizer was at one point making a DS consoleizer and now is just 
working on the PS2 HDMI thing we bought in the Pixel FX Morph. Meanwhile, uh, I think there was some third person I don't even know of who uh, was working on one, and then that just went nowhere. And then this third, this one I just referenced who passed late last year was working with the team and was working on it, but he passed away. So now it's the rest of the team might carry on, might not. This whole situation really sucks. Um, and before anyone says it, because I get why you would, yes, you can hack a 3DS to encode a really bad looking MP4 and send it over a network to a computer and then capture that. That only works on 3DS games. It will not work on a DS game because it boots into a DS mode hardware wise. But anyways, that's why last week was Quest 64 instead of, uh, instead of Sonic Chronicles, which I know really bummed Bob out. He was so excited for Sonic Chronicles and the moment it was Quest 64, he's, he just got really sad. It's like, come on, buddy. It's going to be just as good. And maybe I was right. I don't know. I didn't play Sonic Chronicles last <laughs> right, week. We don't know. How would I know? So I have to, sh this reminded me of an anecdote that I'll never have, that'll never come up again. Uh huh. Even though it's only tangentially related, it's related in the fact of the lead of a team like caused the death of a project. Remember Mother 4? Mm hmm. When it became Oddity? Mm hmm. Uh, so. Apparently, the reason that project fucking died is because the project lead still wanted it to be free after they rebranded to something that wasn't Mother. So they're like, keep work, keep working on this thing for free. But now it's not a fan game. It's oh, a unique thing. That's a really weird reason for a project to fall apart. Weird. Yeah, nobody wants to keep work like I, people will keep working on something that's like a fan project when they're like, well, now it's its own thing. We're not going to make money on it, though. <laughs> right. Well, dude, that just means you're making labor. Or like, you're getting free labor. Right. Oh, what a weird thing. I bet you could make a lot of money as, like, a freelance project manager who's just like, no, hire me to manage your indie project. I wonder. It'll get done. <laughs> I mean, you would think someday... Well, you have to actually be good at it, but... You, you would think someday we could get hired as industry analysts for telling people, you're not shipping that. <laughs> <laughs> that game's nowhere near done. You know, we say that, but at the end of the day, I'm sure there are people in there saying it, and the guy, one step up, just says, nah. I think I think differently. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. And I'll go ahead and head this off because I already explained this to some of the people who just said it in chat, but I'll head this off for the comment section. On the day that all of this happened, somebody tried to play Sonic Chronicles on their emulator and it crashed 20 seconds in. <laughs> that is not a viable choice for an already 15 hour death stream. But thank you. Yeah, an emulator is not, especially an emulator where every single thing you interact with the game with is through the touchscreen. It's through the touchscreen. So then it's like, okay, we probably want to get some way to do touch that's comfortable to do for 15 hours. Like, I don't even know if, to, I, I don't know anything about DS simulation because I don't do it because I would rather not play a DS game than do it. Right, um, yeah. So like, I don't know, can you attach your iPad to your PC and hook up some kind of sync if, does that work if is you there a did delay? something like that there would be a pretty sizable delay um there's the notion that maybe somebody has if you like jailbreak an ipad maybe they would make an emulator for the ipad who knows yeah, what state a, that's in or if you have an android tablet and here's and here's be the best part it. about all this i'm cutting through all the bullshit none of you fucking know and until you confirm a fucking emulator you have in your hands can beat the whole game fuck off with this this suggestion because i am so sick of it <laughs> Uh, no, no, like, it is sickening and fucking annoying for people to be like, why don't you just do your whole playthrough on a thing I don't know works? Probably because I don't want to get 10 hours into a thing and shit breaks. A radical notion that I don't want to trust. You saw a YouTube video where it booted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just, it gets exhausting, especially when people yeah. say it right after $400 of my equipment just broke. I'm not sitting here saying you can't use emulation. You can use emulation. Go right ahead. But in the field of like DS emulation, that is not like ironclad like a lot of other emulators are at this point, right? Yeah, it's not it's not fucking dolphin. It's not beast nest. Like, right. It's not yeah. shit that it's not shit that are it's almost pedantic 
to mm. argue over. Right, because like I've we yeah we used Dolphin for a uh, Adventure Rebirth, right? Yeah, we did that so. during yeah. So like, it's not like all emulators are that tier. Uh, Dolphin's definitely one of the best emulators out there, but even if we did use an emulator, we now need like a good touch interface or it's an absolute nightmare because yeah, like if you're, if you're really invested in this chat, mm -hmm. jail, somebody jailbreak your Wii U, use the <laughs> injection bullshit they have to put, to put Sonic Chronicles into the DS emulator and do a, and play through the entire thing and see that it runs start to finish. Oh, and record it because I won't trust you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's the thing. Even that emulator, like they, custom tailored that emulator for every game so like i've checked out plenty of games that people tried to inject and it didn't work like pokemon games mm -hmm. you know i was definitely believe me i've never liked the ds capture units uh we looked into hey can i inject black and white into this wii u emulator and it works and the answer was hell no <laughs> that wasn't just no it was hell no uh so anyways do not expect any DS-related streams anytime soon. I will do research in my own time. You are not being helpful when you go, have you tried emulation? Because I'm looking into it on multiple layers. And you saying, have you tried emulation is like the... Le that, that is the that's the tech equivalent of you backseating someone who's like, hey, you should jump better. What if you jumped over the thing that's killing you? So anyways, don't I, expect it anytime soon. I feel like it's even stupider than that. I feel like it's the <sighs> equivalent of being like, have you tried fixing it? Yeah, this is basically that tier, yeah. Anyway, uh, that's, that's, uh, we, did, we didn't play anything else Friday, right, Bob? You played. So you played Mario 64 again, didn't you? What? And you played Lagoon. Played Lagoon. Bob, I could have played Mario 64 on Friday. I played that on Sunday. Uh huh. Yeah, that stopped you. And then also Monday. And I think I think Wednesday. I don't think it would Friday though. That seems. Would that, I really? That, that'd be ridiculous. Mario 64 four times in a single week. Anyways, Voxandra bullied Bob until he played Lagoon on Super Nintendo because it was not fair that Bob did not grow up with Lagoon, I guess. I, like, I didn't even have a Super Nintendo for most of my childhood, so of course I didn't play this weird ease knockoff. I didn't yeah, even know it Yeah, it really is. It, it's, it's so blatant. Like, it, looking at it, it almost reminds me of, like, what if we were a Western company who really liked ease? But it's still a Japanese game. It's just... Yeah, the, the funny... It has the energy of, like, what if... It, it, it's like if you fused East with the NES Willow game. Yes. Yeah. Mm. They, and people are saying that apparently it had bump combat in Japan. So now that you have an attack button in the US version that doesn't work. I think you're conflating the SNES versus the Sharp X68K. Okay. Yeah, because the Sharp version's fine. Okay. That version's at all a good game. It's the Super Nintendo one where they're like, but what if you want to hit a button and swing a sword? Yeah, and then the sword swing is the smallest you could imagine. And it's like... You get one pixel. Imagine, okay, I'm holding my sword like this. So if an enemy is directly in front of you, you're singing, swinging to the side of them. Uh-huh. Because it's that off-center. <laughs> Did you know there's a version of East 1 and 2 that has a button? Instead of bump combat? Yes, I can't... The DS version. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I was like, no, that happened. I know that happened. The one YouTube... The one good YouTube video I could find of it back in the day was like, here's all the differences. Don't play this version. <laughs> <laughs> Truth. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that was Friday's stream. Uh... And then I played Mario 64 120 star and then a really quick run. And then we played Shotgun Mario 64, a mod where Mario has a shotgun and he's fucking had enough. Uh, that, that mod is hilarious and delightful. Yeah, they did a ton of work to make a lot of things break. Yeah, they put so much work into how would the, this thing react to a shotgun? Like, you take it inside of TikTok Clock, you could basically bust up every moving object in TikTok Clock. <laughs> 
fantastic. You get those like paddles on the side that just spin slowly with the eight red coins. You shoot that, it spins really fast and falls off. Uh huh. It's golden. And we were able to run it on real hardware. <laughs> it crashed like 10 times. But the crashes were mostly relegated <laughs> to TikTok clock and MIPS with his stand. <laughs> yeah, for some reason, you shoot, shoot MIPS, he becomes a ping pong ball and flies around at high speeds. That's and the that game crashes. Well, that's, see, that's the thing. That wasn't what crashed him because there are plenty of times I just walked up to him and he, he was like, no. Yeah. And then it crashed. I was yeah, like, he, he also why? just crashed the game. I don't know why. Yeah, it's uh, it's unclear. But uh, yeah, he's a very he's a very strong rabbit, Mips the, Mips the rabbit. Does, does this work with the PCD compilation? Uh, Is there like a version of it for the PCD compilation? I would assume that there's some way to play this on your PC as an executable, but I don't actually know. They may be relying on you to play it in an emulator. I was really so, shocked that, that it just feels like the, 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 the default vector that you should be shooting for with these mods now, because uh, you can make it not crash everything. Yeah, I have to wonder how you would have to package it to avoid legal problems. Hmm. Because... I guess what they would have to do is provide you a patch and then you provide the original ROM and then you patch that and then you would feed that into an installer right. that would then install it. I think that's yeah, all they, of what just, would be necessary. They just necessary. can't give you Nintendo's bullshit. Like, right. They can't give so, you anything Nintendo. So I think this would involve... Well, I guess you could custom make an installer that applied the patch to. But yeah, yeah I don't. Do I don't know if they... I don't know. I don't know if they did that. But yeah, it's fantastic. You can blow up the piano in Big Boo's Haunt. You blow up signs and trees. It's hilarious. It's a really good mod. I highly recommend it. And that stream's delightful. So feel free to check that out. Yeah, the only thing wrong with this is they didn't design it with an N64 controller in mind. So L button shoots a shotgun. I like to think of it as a nice challenge added to a game I'm too good at. <laughs> it's like, okay, you now have to be able to let go and slam L like it's bop it. You or you can learn to hold the controller, controller to the left no left no. handle no and reach over no. to the analog stick which is a nightmare no i am not hitting the z button with my middle finger from the left handle uh -huh. and doing the stick no absolutely <laughs> not but yeah anyways that's you know that was great highly recommend that uh we also finished our zet the jewel of Faramore. Mm -hmm. uh bob thoughts that was a good game and I, I really enjoyed how weird the art style maintains the, throughout the entire game. Like, they keep up the, the act the whole time. Um, and you just find lots of neat little things. There's tons of side quests in every level. Like, you're always finding things to give to other people. Yeah, it feels like there's three times as many side quests as you would expect in a normal Zelda. Which is crazy. Something like that. A ton of, a ton of animation work here. Yeah. And a, a really great ending. <laughs> At some point, the princess learns, no, I should kill them. Right. It's like, and uh, it doesn't treat this as a bad lesson for her. No. <laughs> Thank God. She's just like, wait a minute. The cycle of violence could be ended if I just actually don't half ass it. <laughs> Which, you know, once again, should have been the lessons multiple parties should have learned in The Last of Us Part Two. <laughs> but, uh, you know, she learns it here, and that's really great. Jewel Faramore has, a, there's a lot to learn. It's there important is. stories. Lots of good faces and horrible finger animations. <laughs> they, hands that look like feet. The, the hands often look closer to, uh, what was that old Hobbit animation? The Hobbit. I've heard the guys who made it. Rolf Bakshi. Yeah, Rolf Bakshi. It looks like that. And it's wait, wait, like Bakshi or Rankin Bass? Oh, Rankin wait, Bash. it's Rankin Bass. Yeah, because Bakshi did Lord of the Rings, right? Yeah. Yeah. Most of it. <laughs> <laughs> Then he ran out of money and skipped town. <laughs> <laughs> and then he made Quest 64. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. It's really got that energy of like, why is everyone's hands leather? <laughs> this is terrible. Their face looks fine, and then they hold up their head to grab a thing, and you're like, oh no. Are you okay? I, even I haven't finished it, it feels like there's still a lot of quests to go back and do. See what else is in that game. Yeah, we never upgraded our sword. No, we? apparently, the, apparently there's a sword upgrade. We never found it. <laughs> so the whole game, I was hitting things way too many times. 
you had so many cool abilities and powers by the end, but killing an enemy quick wasn't one of them. No, I got th it got to the point where we had so much defensive upgrades. It was made more sense to run through the way levels and not worry about the damage I was taking. Right, because uh, uh, Arzette does not have like a uh, lives system. You just respawn at the most recent checkpoint. So right. Just and that's like every screen transition. Yeah. Anything else? No. By the way, that was a game code provided by, I suppose, Limited Run Games. I don't know. I didn't deal with them directly. They used a inter... In, inter what's the term? Intermediary. Thank you. Uh, so, you know, probably free code from Limited Run Games. Yeah, I'm excited for when they publish the new Call of Duty. Yeah? Yeah, the physical edition. Why would they do that? Well, they're doing Hi-Fi Rush and Sea of Thieves. Why wouldn't they also do oh, Call yeah. of Duty? It would that makes be sense. so yeah. Fucking funny to be like, yeah, we had to have limited run games print Call of Duty. They could, they can print twenty million discs and cases and distribute them to every store in the country, right? I mean, yeah, they can right. promise they'll do that. <laughs> As Microsoft has proven, so in a lot of cases, that's enough. That's enough. Uh, Bob, yeah, I, I, am I to understand you played things other than RZ, Super Mario sixty four? Mario Sunshine for 10 seconds. Uh, I did a little bit. I, okay. I, I spent a lot of time driving down to Niceville this week. Yeah. And then drag up mm -hmm. and sorting an insane amount of junk that's in my closet down there. Yeah. So that, that was most of my week. It was nice uh, having Hungry Howie's again. Oh. It's good to have a, t a $10 two toppy pizza that's like good. I'm trying to think of like. Don't have any around here? No. I didn't even, even think to look. No. It's because Oh man, that sucks. Because the yeah. moment you're not at like the Hungry Howies, like even go fifty miles away to a different Hungry Howies, it's wrong as fuck. So it didn't even <laughs> occur to me, hey, what if you ate the wrong Hungry Howies food up here? Huh. Um yeah. and I also got to try sous vide coffee. It's like cold brew coffee, but sous vide instead. Echo. What? Echo. Right, right. The fuck did you just say? Sous vide coffee. So yeah. Explain this process to me in a way that doesn't make me want to burn you as a witch. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bob, Look, you I didn't, didn't I run the coffee that, shop. No. You're just the guy who came in and bought I, it. I just wanted a cold brew coffee or any sort of iced coffee. <laughs> and they all, all they had for iced coffee was sous vide coffee. <laughs> fucking Mr. Peanut Butter's running the counter. He's like, oh, no, we don't do cold brew anymore. We have sous vide coffee. And you're like, is this a terrible comedy sketch I've <laughs> stumbled into? <laughs> Um, that was weird. Okay, so let's talk about it. For anyone who's just like, I must not be understanding. <laughs> That's how me. this works okay <laughs> so cold brew is when you grind coarsely ground coffee right you 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 set it to a coarse grind and then you grind it and then you leave it in water for like 12 hours some people do it up to 24 mm -hmm. sous vide is when you do that but you kept the water and the coffee grinds <laughs> in a fucking sous vide machine for some reason you kept it Warm. Yeah, they had the description because I had to order this on their website before going in. This sounds in. fake. This sounds <laughs> fake. It sounds like a fake step. I don't even think it's real. I think they're just making cold brew coffee and charging you twice as much and saying it's sous vide. It's magic. It was made my, with magic. My <laughs> brother in Christ, that's just sun tea with beans. Yes. Yeah, actually. So <laughs> let, let me read their description. Okay, do it. Cold brew is less acidic. Yes, but can be very muted False. when it comes to tasting what coffee or what coffee has to offer. Completely fucking wrong, but go uh. ahead. <laughs> we have recently changed our iced coffee brewing message from cold brewing to brewing sous vide. It offers the best of both worlds between cold brewing batches of coffee with more of the clarity found in a batch of filtered brew. If you like drinking iced coffee, this is a welcome upgrade. I'm going to offer the best of both bumpers on my car to you in a parking lot if I find you. <laughs> like, this sounds like horseshit, but I don't know. Was it good? No. What? Oh. It wasn't even good? I Look, I guess I don't think I'm sophisticated enough for these fancier coffee places that don't put enough sugar in. <laughs> because I was like, make oh. it sweet, make it, or put in the, 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 the caramel. Uh-huh. And yeah, they didn't 
it wasn't yeah, sweet I'm, I'm enough. I'm sorry. I'm with huh. I'm with Bob. I'm one of those subhumans who was like, no, why would I get coffee? I'm getting a frappuccino, thank you. Right? Like I'm not I here to level to, up I my need, cred. I, need I want the drug and I want it to taste good. <laughs> yes. I need I need half a cup of corn syrup with my coffee, thank you. <laughs> and uh it does, like you could tell the sous vide nature did make it more of the Acidic, I, yeah, the acidic, yeah. Like, the brighter notes, yeah, the brighter notes. I, which Complex is... notes. Did you yell that in <laughs> the? No, the, no I, I, I drove out the the, the, the drive through as fast as I could. Uh, uh, all I know is the. So we have to go back down to uh, film some things and also review some fazolis. <laughs> I'm going you... to try the sous vide coffee <laughs> when I go down. Because this isn't a chain. This is a local Niceville coffee place. Yes. I hope Did you to... know that, uh, <laughs> that a allegedly, I, I don't know if, if this is entirely true. Mm. The entire reason the Frappuccino exists is because McDonald's did like a re in internal research on their sales. Like they analyzed their sales and were like, we sell half our milkshakes before 830 in the morning. They buy nothing else. They buy a milkshake and they drive off. A milkshake? In the, what? Hell so they were yeah. just like, let's fucking put coffee in it. Make something like that but with coffee. Huh. There's a ton of research that's like, yeah, ice cream for breakfast. It's good for your brain. All right. The brain does need a lot of glucose. I need to try... The sous vide coffee. <laughs> As someone who's going deep down the rabbit hole of arrow presses and cold... By the way, Bob. Uh-huh. I, I deeply fucked up making the cold brew right after you left. I spilled it <laughs> all over the fucking thing. I had to filter it through the cheese clock <laughs> twice to get the grinds you back out. You already mentioned you screwed it up before I even left. Right. I was like, <laughs> I don't think that's properly... Because for people who don't know, I've been making it in a fucking jar. <laughs> With some cheesecloth that a pitcher it goes into. Problem when I flipped it upside down and put it onto the jar with the cheesecloth, it was such a tight compaction this time of the coffee grinds that it did not finish draining somehow because the cheesecloth clumped it up enough and it was airtight. They are too perfectly sized for each other. Uh, so I made a fucking mess. But the, the 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 cold beer that did successfully get extracted and left in a pitcher is delicious. And I will be having some after this podcast because I had this during this podcast. And I'm not doing cold brew, energy drink, cold brew all within. Uh -huh. uh, but I'm tired of this shit. I'm a clumsy fucking oaf of a human. I know this. I try to live my life in a way where I don't put destructible things around me or drinks that could get knocked off of shit. So I finally bought... The, after many weeks of consideration and delaying because I feel bad even buying a thing that is effectively we made a cool jar <laughs> uh, I bought the OXO cold brew maker which was the really tall one you saw mm. in that video comparison where you literally just put the coffee grinds and water in the top chamber let it sit for 12 hours and then just hit the switch to make it to drain into a carafe underneath okay that's a little bit more my speed. Right. That's a little bit less. Get the cheesecloth, <laughs> flip this thing over this, make sure it drains. <laughs> do, do you feel better now? Do, do you feel more together? Do, do you feel like Makima might finally notice you? I think she might. <laughs> I think this is it, man. I think I got a chance. Really, though, the, the, the amazing thing for this, the main reason why this actually, the, today, this clicked, where I was like, I should. That is so easy, I could do it during a stream. Uh-huh. The other thing, no, you had just been like, oh, no, I broke everything. <laughs> yeah, that's basically what happened yesterday. I leave the stream and the Riddler sound comes from the kitchen. <laughs> but yeah, no, I can walk over to a thing and hit a switch in the middle of a stream. That's reasonable. <laughs> it overflows because you have to solve the jar under it. <laughs> Damn, that's a tiny jar. Did I put a mug? <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I say... Also, uh, there's a certain volume of making this shit that I need to operate at that normal solutions maybe wouldn't, like, the size of jar I would need. <laughs> you like the Gatorade cooler with the spout on it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, can, uh, like, if you're just leaving that shit in there for, like, 12 hours, can you, yeah. like, like, put Skittles in it like it's vodka? You get, I mean, like, you, rainbow coffee? Probably. 
I'm not sure that that would be good at all. Who knows? Maybe that's on wave five of the Donut Pod Reward. <laughs> hey, you said you wanted half, you wanted a cup of corn syrup in your coffee. Let's just do that in advance. Get the rainbow brew. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the worst thing since the pizza on wave one. <laughs> He's going to say you need to get that spray paint off of Howie's and just lightly dust the top. And my lips. And they just look like the fucking bombed out <laughs> Coomer <Witness> meme. Me. <laughs> Cold brew enjoyer. Rainbow brew enjoyer. There we go. Jesus. Anyway. Uh-huh. So I bought one of those. I'll let you guys know how it goes. The funny thing is the carafe that goes underneath it that looks like a science beaker. <laughs> so I'm doing science. Yes. I'm doing so much important uh -huh. science. It's so important. <laughs> I'm a scientist, not someone just hopelessly addicted to caffeine. <laughs> Somebody was saying, like, they could... <laughs> And I, I, once again, I'm not saying someone reputable say this, just to be clear. I just literally read this in some fucking Discord or something. But somebody was like, you know how they can test for ADD with cocaine? <laughs> and that's what, and then they led into another thing. And I'm just like, they do what? We could do what? Excuse me? Anyways. I mean, uh, like, the, like Adderall is basically just meth, like, right? really crank we're down. We're just going to be like... Okay, you both get a little meth, okay? <laughs> yeah, it turns out there's only like three or four chemicals that really affect the human brain, and we just keep <laughs> repackaging different dilutions of them. <laughs> no, it's true, and it's really kind of funny and fucked up. Anyways, uh, that's that's it for whatever this segment was. Uh, Bob, you said you spent your time organizing, driving, eating, drinking sous vide coffee. <laughs> a future I'm looking forward to, obviously. Obviously, this is the future of coffee. Uh-huh. Uh, I also got to play a little bit of Ed in Street Fighter. Okay. A very small bit. I beat his, can his arcade story mode pretty much. Okay, I have one question for you. Okay. This came up on a different podcast. Does Ed have a last name, or is, is his name just Ed? Because so many I characters in Street Fighter subject, have a last think, name. So I, he might not have a he last name. He might not have a last name. Yeah, I don't think he has a last name. Okay. Yeah. All right. But yeah, his story mode is like him going around. I guess between games, he has been freeing people, the other test subjects of Shadow Lou, yeah. and making his own team. Oh, he's got so, a suicide squad. Yeah. So you see his suicide squad that has oh. a gorilla, a talking dolphin. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And yeah, just it, it's really funny. I, I hope that we get to see more of them. I don't want the, any of them even playable. I just need to see more. Like, they need a full story mode with these yeah, guys. Yeah, and put them just in that open world thing. The dolphin could just stand there. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the, the art they showed of the dolphin is just the old fin up on its, on its fin standing straight up. I'm like... Impressive. Does, does he... Not its tail? Does he need... Or the, like, this, his, his tail. Feel, oh, okay. Fin, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it feels like he's going to free all these freaks, and then, like, it'll be... This is the secret origin of the Commando team from Captain Commando. Ooh. Right? Uh, Wait, are you telling me Ed is Captain Commando? This works for me. I like this. Maybe. I mean, yeah, he looks similar enough. I could make this work. Yeah, I could see yeah. one of his supers just being Captain Corridor. Uh, his story is also kind of dumb because the, you fight uh, JP at the end of it, and he's like, I need you to uh, run... Neo Shadow Lou. And that's like, I'm not gonna do that. I'm going to run my own thing and call it Neo Shadow Lou. It's like, don't do that. you that that's a, taking accountability for all their crimes, Ed. What are you doing? <laughs> See, I, I don't know why I feel like that's a thing really common in Japanese things, because that's also a thing in Final Fantasy X too. <laughs> I mean, it's where also it's like, kind of a thing in Metal Gear Solid where it's Fox Die and oh, yeah, yeah, and uh, what is it, Fox Hound? Because there was a Fox unit and then it was Fox Hound. Mm -hmm. And there's like a weird, what's with that similar named thing? Yeah, because because in Final Fantasy X, two groups like we're Neo Yevon, the new version of the church that is opposed to every single thing the original church was about. I'm like, yeah, but you, you you call yourself Neo? Yeah, and then Neo Yevon. Umbrella. Yeah. What is with I this? I don't know why they do this so often. <laughs> why does this keep happening? 
I hate motherfucking Pepsi. I'm making Neo Pepsi. <laughs> uh, but you don't think people might think that tastes like Pepsi? <laughs> and it's owned by the Pepsi Corporation? You don't think that? <laughs> uh, well, but that's Ed, cool. Good for you, Ed. Yeah, Ed, Ed's pretty cool. Um, he's a boxing character with some uh, Bison's energy powers. So that, that comes through and like you have a, a leash you can throw out. In the, like, okay. Even if they block it, if you charge it up, it will pull them towards you, which is really neat. And I've seen a whole bunch of cool combo videos where he basically is able to punch dudes way back, then grab them, pull them towards himself oh, and uppercut them and all sorts of stuff like that. I'm like, that's, that's so dope. This looks really sick. God, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. I'm like, oh, man, this might be my favorite boxer from or for Street Fighter. They, they made like, him into Scorpion. Right? <laughs> Like, but Scorpio was energy powers. Yeah. No, that's sick. Huh. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I, I his comp only real competition is Dudley, and Dudley's really cool. Dudley's but, really cool. But it's, he's up there. Cool. Um, so I'm excited to play more of that, but did not have much time. I also, this morning, booted up Dragon Ball Fighters on the PS5 because it's on there now. Um, I didn't get a chance to play it mm. because I found out pretty quickly. Oh, yeah. I need to go re-download every piece of DLC individually. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, it's like this will take me uh, at least 10 to 15 minutes. I own so I much DLC. The, I found the packs and those seem to work. Okay. Okay. Good. I could not find that in these like three minutes. I was like, yeah, it's not. It's not. I don't understand why fucking Sony does not include because we. Because uh, I went through this exact thing the last time I played Mortal Kombat 11. I don't understand why Sony just doesn't have a button like, hey, download all the shit I own for this game. Right? Hey, give me my shit. The button. Uh, Which is like weird. Steam sometimes, does that automatically. Sometimes when you buy a new game, it does do that. Mm -hmm. Like, say, when, when we, you buy we, the new one. Yeah. Right. When you buy the new one, like when uh, we got the code for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Rebirth. Yeah. I download that and it's like, hey, do you want to install these? Do you also own? It's like, yes. Thank you. Uh, but when it's something you already have downloaded, there's no like button that just says download it all, fucker. My uh, my mystery with fighters today was I, I booted my console or your console technically. Uh -huh. I look at it, it's like, yeah, you have 51 hours in this game, you don't own it. I go, what do you mean I don't own it? I swear to God, I own this game. And I go, I go search through my emails. It's like, yeah, you bought the Don Don Hikaru song, you or Kokoro, Don Don Kokoro, and then you bought all these characters and all this shit. And I'm like, there's so much money I've spent on this, and I spent 51 hours playing it. How do you? What do you mean I don't? And then I realized oh, it's on disc, and it's in a box in a giant Tupperware in the storage room. Yeah, whereas mine's on disc and. I knew exactly where it was. <laughs> so I said, we'll just show it in really quick. There was an also also a weird thing, and I'll have to see if uh, they fucked me, and now I, ha and I have to be mad because I didn't, I didn't look that deeply. But it wouldn't let me... Like, I would select, okay, anime music pack, I own that. Yeah. And be like, you don't own it. But then there's a box that says add-on, and you click it, and it drops a menu where both things say add-on. I saw this no one other text. At. Uh, a, and if you select character. the other add-on, it will be free. That is because you own it already. That is the second worst yeah, part of the PS5 experience. The worst yeah, being when almost, you try to manage storage and it just fucks off for minutes. Right. Yeah. So it sure sucks that Microsoft is a giant tech company that doesn't give a shit about their user experience because Sony's isn't that great. No, it could it be just, better. Like there, there's so many things that Microsoft actually does do better. Like. Hey, Sony, how come you don't just have uh, here's how much space you have on your drives when I'm looking at my library of things I own? That's really useful information when I'm contemplating what to download. They're like, you're right, Chris. They add that and now libraries don't load. Like you go to your library and it takes minutes to Jesus. pop up. When is somebody going to sue Sony for not for, for the 8K thing being on the box? I don't know. I think about Every week, I'm like, what world do we live in where no one has sued Sony in three years? Yeah. Well, Americans get painted as such overly litigious people. How have we not sued? It says it on the box. 
This isn't a gray area, it's black and white. Do you output for AK? No. Does, does the boxes for the Slims have it? You're asking if they do? Yeah. Let me look. I have the Slim box right here. I'm very curious. Because I have no idea. Yeah, I have no clue. I have no idea. Three years. Yeah, no, it's insane. Reminder, by this time last gen, someone had won the lawsuit against Killzone Shadowfall for saying the multiplayer was 1080p 60 because internally it's interlaced. Because internally, the multiplayer runs in an interlaced mode that gets deinterlaced by the engine. They won that suit by now! Yeah, that makes... How <laughs> yeah, it says it right on the front. It says it right on the front top right corner. 8K. Wow. Yeah, and there isn't even like a... They haven't even released a single thing that's like, this boots an 8K. Well, I mean, it literally achieve. can't output an 8K. Right. Like if it they, didn't even just put the menu on a screen. In 8K, they would be fine, but it can't even do that. And just so any, everyone's clear... Hey, none of us own an 8K TV. No. But that's not the fucking point. You know, when the PS3 was like a year before launch, you know, the digital locker is going to improve your movies. <laughs> they didn't put that shit on the box. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine if they did that? They're like, buy the PS3. It's going to make your movies look better over time. Digital locker. And I'm like, what the fuck is this box talking about? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell does that mean? New stream call Sue Sony. They have the the back of the PS3 box shows the elaborate trophy rooms. Oh, for PlayStation Home. Yes, yeah, so like, like yeah, this will be real. Here's my Leia Platinum Trophy. Look at it; it's so beautiful. And it. <laughs> Could you imagine if uh, if what what was his name? The guy who ended up at uh, Google, Phil Harrison. Yeah, Phil Harrison. I was like, Phil, fucking shit. Imagine he had that British accent instead of the one he has. Yeah. So he just sounded like people, Michael Caine or something. I think people would be way more, uh, less trusting of him. I'm not sure why. You, you think so? Yeah. You think you think if he took the stage and he just had Michael Caine's exact voice? <laughs> yes. The Xbox 360 is the scariest console I've ever known. <laughs> anyway. What the fuck are we talking about? Uh, did you have any other Ed comments? No, I don't. Okay. Ahmed Terry. Is that it? Yeah. Did we throw it to one of the other two? Sure. I don't think I need to explain any more about your sunshine insanity. That was just cruel. <laughs> you better be careful, Bob. Dan plays it one or two more times. He'll start to like it, and it'll be regular, become a regular thing. It's, there's no point at which I'm going to like sunshine. I can't skip the cutscenes. That's... Well, so will you cool. will, will, will you see, Dan, love and hate are closer together than anybody wants to admit. I keep watching other streamers do that. I will not cross those grounds. <laughs> uh, says the guy who be talking about number 920 times. Uh, uh, but hey, at least my playthrough of Sunshine's down to like four hours and 30 minutes or something. So, so, cool. so is, is, is Wave 5 just going to be uh, 100 playthroughs of Mighty Number no. 9? Just every $100. Oh. Jesus. Don't tempt him. <laughs> I'm Mighty doing number nine will continue until the Donathon ends. Yeah, I feel like we stream it a hundred times. The Donathon will end. All right. Maybe. Dan, I think if you streamed it a hundred times, it wouldn't even take down the clock as it currently stands. <laughs> it would. It would. I'm not, I'm not fast enough to beat it in an hour and a half. The game's a little, a little chunky. I think it's, I think it's two hours. So here you go. People are like, this is sad. Stop giving him money. <laughs> but, but you keep getting faster, so... I think I would start falling apart as a human and degrading into my core components. <laughs> and then uh, you'd come back even stronger. <laughs> it changed me. Hey, Chris. I heard you played Darksiders 3. I did all in one stream, which I didn't really intend to do. It just kind of worked out that way. Because I was like, well, I don't think this is that long. I can do it all in one stream. Oh, no, I can't. Oh, but it's, there's not enough left to justify coming back. I, I, better, just, I better just eat it. <laughs> I will be right back. If we... 
It is the shortest one. Okay, well, that explains why you were able to do that, at least. And it's sure Dark Souls, kind of. Kind of. It's not really hard enough to be Dark Souls. I didn't die very... I think I died, like, maybe... I died for, far more often to some poorly thought out and implemented set PC section than I ever did to the combat. I think I only died to the combat, like, twice. I... It's weird that this is the shortest one, but this is the one with Dark Souls influence, which we would think would make it the longest one. The world is very tiny. Huh. Like they they didn't have a lot for this game. I'm kind of surprised it got made even. So uh, I, I it's know once it, again it, it felt it's that once way again before. A prequel. It's once again a prequel. In fact, the final boss of one shows up in the ending cutscene of Darksiders 3 to be like, I'm here and menacing you. This is literally like 15 minutes before the end of Darksiders 1. What? But you don't see Fury in Darksiders 1. No, no, it's a different place. Like, while Death, uh, not Death, War was riding around doing his Triforce quest to build the sword that can kill the final boss, the final boss was here fucking with you. Oh my god. And you don't fight him or anything, he's just there. All right. So the plot of this is even bizarrely separate from every other story where it's like it doesn't actually have anything to do with the story of one. Like the story of two is death wants to get war off the hook. So he has to bring humanity back to life. Mm -hmm. This is the seven deadly sins are like demons and they escape. Go kill them. Oh, Huh. Weird. Uh, which is funny because you do it by sucking them into like a skull-shaped pendant. And it always reminds me of little Nikki. Yeah, okay. Uh, they patched in a new... Uh, they patched in something called classic combat mode. Which lets you dodge and jump out of attacks. I believe that is all it does. Unlike Dark Souls, where your animation locked until oh. the animation finishes. Yes. Wow. They're like, mostly, well, the game was uh, okay at all. <laughs> yeah, mostly it just feels like this is what the game should have been. But some bosses can't deal with you being able to dodge out of your attacks at all. It's like, like I'm doing Bayonetta dodges left and right through every one of their attacks and just hitting them at every second. And they can't really do much about it. <laughs> mm, that is not a great way to change your entire combat system in the middle of your franchise no <laughs> it all it also literally has like souls like you you have souls and you lose them when you die oh my god that's a thing uh, more people should examine before they just put in their video game yeah and you do level up there's but there isn't stats like, you level up melee damage, magic damage, or health. And it's percentage based on the damage and just a linear upgrade for health. So I upgrade melee damage. I deal 5% more melee damage. And you upgrade your weapons also. I think this is maybe... First of all, you by far have, like, Fury has by far the most lame Kratos cutscenes when she kills bosses. Like, <laughs> they're all so bad. That's impressive, because one was not exactly good. <laughs> like, one of the early ones is, like, she gets impaled on a spear, and then does, like, a backflip into the boss and stabs them in the eye with the rebar going through her. Like, that's a move Laura Croft needs to break out in the next Tomb Raider. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> It was it was fine. Like it it's it's not a bad game. Uh, I didn't really like it once it started getting into the fucking Zelda puzzles in the very end of the game, where it starts having mostly you don't you don't get fucking items in this. Just uh, every every so often, usually when you beat a big boss, but not every boss because it only happens four times. A guy just pulls you through a portal and is like, "I'm a big important character." Here's the thing. <sighs> You beat a boss, and then you go in a room, and there's a lady, and she's like, in the next room, is the portal, and takes you to the rest of the game. Jesus. 
<laughs> like he's he's like here here here's here's the fire hollow here's the stasis hollow here's the force hollow because he's the lord of hollows so he gets you gives you like a vessel with this primal energy in it wow. that lets you change modes and fire form gives you a triple jump you already have a double jump but it gives you a triple jump whoa uh and then you get the storm hollow which lets you glide it's a shitty glide though so you you hardly ever use it then the force hollow gives you the 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 spider ball from metroid yeah i yeah, thought you we, do that that was so bad looking <laughs> and we were watching and lurking <laughs> through the stream while getting food and stuff and yeah you did that bob's like the spider ball <laughs> it's really slow and shitty too like i yeah. don't know why they did it they translated the speed perfectly for the game boy to the fucking ps4 uh, and then the last one lets you do wall jumps but only on specific walls that have glowing blue energy and are directly facing each other hey at also, least the you wall can jump walk on water the wall jump looked really cool though right it <laughs> controls like shit yeah. i still don't understand exactly how it works i just kind of hold and press intermittently and it gets me up the wall uh mm. and that's mainly you like and so there's so you don't get any abilities to affect the environment until the third one the force hollow because it lets you break purple shit or or knock around purple blocks before then you don't have any kind of zelda like items so there's not really any puzzles other than find the bomb and throw it at the thing that can only be destroyed by the bomb okay go on and then once it started having zelda puzzles again i'm like oh this lost a point because <laughs> they're they're the whole series their zelda puzzles are not great And it's kind of made worse by in that in the last section of the game where it's like if you do it wrong, it's just we just kill you. Yeah, that that is uh, not something you should do as a Zelda puzzle. <laughs> Which is it, it doesn't even make sense that you die because it's like well you got sucked up by the wind, but you didn't actually get sucked up by the wind because you're in underground and there's like a grate on the ceiling that is letting the wind come in. So you so you just kind of spin around in the air a little bit and then explode. <laughs> <laughs> was you, that easy to kill by the riders? Well, all, 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 it was a damn head. that easy, huh? Yeah. Why are they keeping it, that main dude chained up for all these years? They could have stuck him in like a wind tunnel. And uh, it, it real quick, really fit. the number one thing this is reminding me of: these they made a Zelda puzzle, but if you do it wrong, you die. Lords of Shadow. Yeah, especially too. It just makes me think of that. I mean, the, the, the element switching, which also switches your sub weapon, feels very Lords of Shadowy. Yeah. Uh, so the game does have one of the funniest moments I've ever seen in a game <laughs> where you spend you spend you spend like an hour being menaced by the tornado that, that will suck you <laughs> up, up in the air and, and kill you. It's like a sentient tornado, like the, 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 the Navi type character calls it the Tempest. Like you're supposed to know what the fuck that is. Then at the end, you kill it. Like it's just going around in like a prison yard, this giant tornado, and it goes over like an oil patch and you set the oil patch on fire and then the tornado gets set on fire and dies. <laughs> The tornado yeah. dies and it goes, thank you, as it burns. <laughs> Did someone clip this? I need to see this. Oh my I god. I don't know if somebody clipped it. I might I'll, I might go find it later if nobody did. That's <laughs> Are you sure you aren't playing an NES game? <laughs> so so you kill all the you kill all the all the sins. None of them are particularly threatening. Uh, the only one that killed me a bunch of times was Gluttony because he has an instant kill move where he eats you. Great. Mm. And also his boss's fight is structured unlike any other boss fight in the game. And then at the end of the game, you, you, you Pride appears after you've killed like four sins and is like, you're a bitch. I'm not going to fight you till you've killed every other sin and then goes through a portal and the portal just sits there, but it won't let you through until you kill the other sins. <laughs> so you go, you go kill, you go through the portal and you kill pride. And then you're your Navi type character who is a watcher, which is like a weird looking shade. That was your Navi character in one. A, like that was like, that was a guy one voiced by Mark Hamill. This is a, a like a girl one. Mm hmm. 
Your watcher reveals, no, I was actually Envy. That Envy you killed at the start of the game was fake. Okay. You never, you never really confirmed it. You just saw this thing that was kind of stanced up and beat the shit out of it and assumed it was Envy. <laughs> yeah. Reasonable so, assumptions. So Envy is pretty cool because she absorbs all the powers of the other sins from the amulet and gets four arms and uses the weapons of the other three riders, which I think is pretty cool. Like, not literally, but like she uses a big great sword and, and, a, and sides and twin guns. Mm -hmm. Huh. And she goes and starts shit with the Elder Gods. So we finally see the Elder Gods' combat capabilities, which is they can shoot fireballs out of their big stationary, like, Moai heads. <laughs> so she's kind of just fucking them up. Yeah, as it turns out, if you can't move, <laughs> right? and you just shoot fireballs, you're not that much more dangerous than, Nickel than a Nickelodeon game show for kids. <laughs> So you go, you go kill her, and then, uh, then the, the the elder gods decide that you have to die too because you mouthed off to them before saving them. <laughs> so then she throws you, you throw the sim, sin amulet at them, and for some reason it goes off like a fucking grenade. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't, I don't think it kills them. It's unclear what it does. <laughs> but and then you escape and. Fury is going to become the the new guardian of humanity because there's a there's like a hundred people left, and she gives a speech about how everybody wants humans dead because they can truly bring balance to the cosmos. And I'm like, okay, this is a weird thing to include in the the last ten minutes of the game that is never going to have a sequel. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then you get you get a tease of strife, like there's there's a guy at the human enclave because that's like your your. Dark Souls esque base that you go back to to get weapon upgrades. There's like one human guy who's like a black guy who's voiced by Phil Mar. And then he's he's actually strife. So he literally he's literally spawn. Like he turned like the, the suit comes over him and he's spawn now and has okay. the two guns. <laughs> nice. Uh, and you get that you get that at the end. Nice. And then and then Fury goes through the portal to wherever the humans were sent to and the game's over and there's never going to be a fourth one and it's like come on let let joe mad make one more they only need one more i knew when that dude was phil lamar i'm like something's gonna happen with you <laughs> something dope so i'm glad it, he became it, spawned it, they, they ruin it they <laughs> ruin it honestly because oh, lust lust who is a pretty cool portrayal of lust because she's like lust isn't just sex it's any desire for anything hmm so she she traps Fury in an illusion where the other horsemen come like, Fury, you're so cool and strong. You're the leader of the horsemen now. And Strife is there. So one we get to see his design before that reveal, which I feel like kind of uh, undermines it. Two, he talks and it's obviously Phil Lamar doing the exact same voice. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't even think there's a filter over it. So it's just like, oh. You're that guy, the only you're the it's the exact same voice as the only human who spoke in a cutscene who also has a different design from every other human. Right. I wonder who you could be. You could be anyone right now. You playing a uh, Genesis? <sighs> Not on stream. It's like a totally different genre. It's like a Diablo, it Diablo type of game. Yeah. It's like and it's a super prequel. Like it's before any of them. Oh. So it's like I don't I don't really need another prequel. Yeah, but that's all they want to make. <laughs> so just so just just make Darksiders the four, which mm -hmm. is what Joe Mad wants to call it. And let me play as and just just do your finishing game. Show show the charred council do something. Apparently there's a fucking Darksiders novel. And in that novel, the 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 charred council has like their own guys who are like on the level of the horsemen, but we never see them in any of the games. Just like Joe Mad, please. He's You're not Mortal Kombat. It's gonna happen. Any day now. <laughs> Just talk to Embracer. I'm sure they'll green light a really high budget game for you. Uh-huh. Yeah, may maybe he can get the money from somebody else, and then Embracer will let him use the IP. Or maybe they'll even sell the IP back to him because uh they they'll take any it, money. Yeah, it seems like that's the sort of thing happening in the industry right now. I you know what? I I I think we can do this. We just got to teach Joe how to do like mind control and then he could get Sony Santa Monica to make the fourth Darksiders. 
<laughs> the world will be a better place for it. No, I, th I think Darksiders 4 needs to still be, like, culturally in 2012. Well, what if we got Ninja Theory to make it? Oh, no. I don't think Ninja Theory was ever culturally relevant. I think you can look at their, the sales of their games and go, oh, why did anyone hire you to make anything? God, yeah, I never thought about what is the sales story for Ninja Theory. Because critical reception, they've been critical darlings the whole time. It never once occurred right. to me. Total copies of all of their games have they ever sold? I don't think they've ever had anything that like did especially well. Yeah, I think DMC, the DMC is like possibly the best selling, and then the second best selling is uh, Hellblade. And I don't even think you can trust the DMC, the DMC sales because it was a it was a PlayStation Three PS Plus game where like the, those still counted as sales because it wasn't standard in the industry yet. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I remember that they were like, it sold like 500 fucking, 500,000 units. We haven't sold shit. Then they put it on PS Plus. It's like, it sold 1.2 million in only <laughs> six months from our last update. And it's like, it's, oh. still, it's still the worst selling in the series, but that doesn't matter. It's great. We actually. also spent a lot of money doing it. <laughs> wait, wait, what? <laughs> I played more Final Fantasy VII Remake. I'm still going through that. Uh, just knowing that you need to be switching characters constantly changes that game a lot because you st you start to look at it differently. Because you realize, oh, if I switch to Aerith across the map and hit the guy with spells, he will start to trundle across the entire battlefield towards her. See, and this is some simple lessons you would have gotten if you just played the game Third Birthday when it came out. You would have been like, oh, this is the same shit. So, yes, they, they, they should have just had something like, again, do maternal pop-up that's like, hey, do this. This this strategy is part of the game. Yeah, no, it's true. They also want you to swap your fucking let load out a lot, which I feel like you could make the UI a little bit better if you wanted me to do that and let me have presets. Uh, what makes you think that? Because some bosses will be like, uh, if you don't hit me with my element, I'm never vulnerable to anything. Oh, so you mean like heading into like a Like your battle. material loadout. Yeah. Are oh, you yeah. switching that in battle? No, you can't switch okay, in battle. Okay, yeah, that's what I... Okay, just making sure. Does it have, it, does it have a, anything to fully change that whole sets? I thought it did. I don't. I don't think. I don't think it lets you have like presets per yeah. character. Yeah, right. I thought it had loadouts. It mm -hmm. lets you if you swap weapons or something. It's like swap over the materia. Mm -hmm. you oh do that. yeah, that yeah, it does do that. Same with mm -hmm. armor. But like, I would like. Yes, I'd like to set up these loadouts and can go in the menu like with a button press switch mm -hmm. to like layout one two three for cloud or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was surprised when Grand Blue Relink had a system like that. It's something that. It took, I believe, Destiny uh, eight years to get <laughs> something like that. They they added it like within the last couple of years, and it was like, oh, people have been asking for this since day they, one. They couldn't fit it in there with the game I bought on discs <laughs> right? for Destiny Two, so they had to delete that first, and that allowed for the capacity for them to put that feature in. Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah, that makes really, sense. That's really what's up. I sh I sure keep doing big ch chunks of that game that I don't remember existing. Are you serious, man? <laughs> what? Well, there's just so many. Like, I completely forgot. Oh, yeah, there's this weird little mini dungeon when you're getting Aerith home. Yeah. Where, where yeah. Cloud has to do the exercise bars that he goes hand over hand across a bunch of times. I only remembered the Tifa thing in, in the Shinra. The headquarters with that. <laughs> this is what happens when you stretch out four hours of game into 40 hours of game. Yep, I mean, I remember the forty. <laughs> <laughs> you it, you played seven originally enough times where you're like, well, that that is what was there, obviously in seven remake, and you forgot yes, about all is, the that additional. Is, yeah, that is pretty much how it works. Yeah. Mm. I also played Katamari Damacy again because I'm like I'll play Katamari Damacy again. I I don't I don't I don't know how I feel about that fucking port. I think it's kind of lame. The first yeah. one we love Katamari seems a lot more a lot better. Yeah, it's frame capped at but thirty. But uh, what else about it? 
uh, the physics just seem wrong. Like, I don't, I don't remember shit flying off you constantly in the first game, like, in the originally. And I also keep getting stuck on things and it vibrating a bunch of shit off my Katamari, which I also don't remember happening in. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I'm not convinced that port's uh, all, all, all square. I mean, it's not like Namco doesn't have <laughs> that has that sort of good history doing ports. So I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, if they, they sure it don't. I'm trying to think of Namco ports. I just keep thinking of the most real recent tales of Symphonia one. It's like, oh, yeah, the Symphonia one. That's like, yeah, it's worse than the one we shipped on PS3 last gen, like two gens ago. Yeah. Oh, is wait a minute. The PS4 port of that doesn't have English voice acting. What? I. What? I, of tales Katam of Symphonia? Sure. It does. Yeah. I, I, Katamari? Oh. I don't think any did, did any version of Katamari yeah. the original have English voice acting? Yeah, the PS2 original has English voices. I know because the voice acting is fittingly weird. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it doesn't then, because uh, That's weird. Like there's hardly any, so I guess I don't know, maybe they fucking lost it. There's a bunch of kids who were just like voiced in the weirdest way you could imagine. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it really lended itself to the weird energy this cutscene said. Oh, that's weird. I didn't know about that. That's I need to play. I need to play Beautiful because that's on Xbox Back and Pat. I remember that being really disappointing in small. Yeah, every Katamari past the second one I hear from people nonstop is really disappointing. I, I think, remember liking the PS3 one. Yeah, the PS3 one. I remember with the first, the only other one that was still good. Like, what about the DS one? What about the PSP the one? DS one. What about the iPhone one? <laughs> Yeah, no. Like, I remember, like I said, the PS3 one was the only one I remember being good <laughs> oh, after the no, PS2. No. <laughs> I, rem I remember the PSP one. I did not know there was a DS one. Yeah, it's pretty funny because the bottom screen's it. And you... It makes sense. That makes sense that they would have done that, but I don't remember it. They they honestly should they should make a port of whatever other ones they think is good or good enough to make ports of, which is the PS3 one, assumingly. Mm-hmm. Then just make a new one with the assets. Like, you can do some really wacky shit with the par power you have now. Right? Like, imagine everything just still looks as good as it did on the PS2, and the scale gets bigger and bigger and bigger. I'm being informed the DS1 was canceled before it came out. <laughs> that explains. Okay. I was like, I've seen pictures of the... Oh, that's all there ever was. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, and there was a Vita one. Because you got yeah. two sticks. Just... Oh. That, that's it, I'm done. That's all I played. That port seems banged up. I went out to my uh, mailbox just now. <laughs> what is it, Dan? I can't read it from here. It's, uh, it's Vampire Rain Altered oh Species, God. the PS3 version. Incredible. Ooh. Yeah, I got... I got it came with everything, Bob. Oh, it, in, wow. In, the not just set. the manual, but also this fancy poster. The chat won't get to see until that's true. Oh, wait, no, no. It's not deleting it yet. There we go. Oh man, don't you feel like a badass having this? What a tiny little baby poster. Don't, don't you don't you enjoy this tiny little baby poster? So, you know, we needed the definitive version. Uh -huh. That's why we came to the PS3. That's why I play on the PS3 to get the definitive version. <laughs> 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 oh. <clears throat> hey Agro, what you been playing? Uh I have seen the other side of Infinity. I finally finished the Unicorn Overlord demo. It ends? <laughs> I was at like six hours when I made that tweet, and a bunch of responses were like, yeah, it took me a while to notice the timer, and I said, excuse me? <laughs> the what? I had, yeah, I, I had like 30 minutes left. Because uh, it's a six-hour timer that doesn't run while you're in the pause menu. Oh. Oh. So I ended up with like over seven hours on that demo. <laughs> it is a smorgasbord. Wow, that's like the that's like the skull and bones demo. <laughs> Only it's a game anyone would like, <laughs> right? <laughs> Except now I'm like, like the game doesn't launch until next Friday, like not tomorrow but next Friday. Right. Mm -hmm. So by next big thing, I'm I'm going to be um inconsolable that <laughs> 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 that game's not out yet. Uh, good luck, everything else coming out this year. Yeah. 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 It's messed up. Yeah. It's not fair. Like, the last thing that happened before the demo ended was I got, uh, I did an event that let me start hiring. They call them sellswords. Uh, 
the the male version look like guts cosplayers. <laughs> the female version are just Lance Connects. Like the full poofy slash sleeves with the Zweihanders. That's it's awesome. super good. That game that game looks so good. What a nightmare this year is. It has so it has so many good games. It does. Oh man. That um so now that I've played this game, uh why does every, why is everybody so mean to Ogre Battle? How is it different? What uh, does it lack? Imagine every single one of these things. Imagine someone made Quest 64 out of a unicorn over there. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you could do the That's long version now, now. Now the only version you can play on a modern platform is perfectly fine. No, it's it's true. The, like the N sixty four ogre battle game is different from Tactics Ogre, yeah, which no, is no, the no. thing they remade on the PSP, and we have a modern yeah, port like, of. There's, there's These no, are two very different things. There's no modern version of Ogre Battle. Ogre, what it, what it less is that? Is the N64 game Let Us Queen, Cling Together, or is it no, the Queen's blah, no, blah, blah? No, that's the PSP thing. Yeah. Okay, so the N64 one is... It and Unicorn Overlord are very, very similar. But it is definitely much lesser because, once again, it's a vanillaware game, obviously. March of the Black Queen? Oh, March of the Black yes. Queen. And you, oh imagine my, it, Ogre, Unicorn, Battle is, Ogre Battle is a real-time strategy. Yes. Game. That's bizarre. Yes, yes. and that's what, that, that's what this was as well, a unicorn. Mm -hmm. But Ogre Battle, imagine if the game ran at a tenth of the speed and everything was far as it apart. And that's mm. the big, only the tip of the struggle that is Ogre Battle. Yeah, this this seems like like this this combat system is dense and complex and seems house of cardsy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like these big complicated battles. Yeah, no, if they were like even 50% bigger would be a whole mm, yeah, no, not great. Holy shit though. Like the 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 instantly graspable depth of the combat and the strategy in this game. Letting you build units with like you're you know how every time we talk about companion AI, I bitch about games not doing it the way Dragon Age 1 did, where I get to set up <laughs> conditions and if-then statements for abilities proccing? Mm -hmm. That's what this game does. Uh, Aggro, I believe you mean it uses the Final Fantasy XII Gambit system. No, that <laughs> system sucks. <laughs> it is, uh, Bob, it is basically identical to Dragon Age. It is almost exactly the same. There's, there's no way it's that, that bad, right? Because there are, like... Final Fantasy XII does not give you the level of controls that if-then statements are. It's literally, you have a whole bunch of if statements that don't, you can't nest things in any proper way, so you just end up with just a bunch of incomplete systems, a bunch of things like, oh, I can't set up an actual set of things that happen when this happens. I set up something that will always happen, and you just turn it off, and it's, it's terrible. Bob, Bob, in Dragon Age Origins, you have to find more slots for this system in stores. That's funny as shit. Yeah, in Final Fantasy XII, you have to uh, buy, find them on the gigantic board. Uh, real quick, I would like to know. Uh, it's okay. They already typed it in the comments section. We have engagement already. They wrote uh -huh. this before. we. Uh, the person of Lordly Caliber is, in fact, the N64 game because it is one of the only two that do not have Queen in the title. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So was that not the first thing I guessed? And then... No, you said Cling Together. Ah, okay. Those are the only two titles I actually know. That's <laughs> why when I guessed the Queen one, I was like, Queen something, something Queen? I don't fucking... The There's Witch a Queen. Neo Geo Pocket Color Ogre Battle game? Jesus, they would put this shit anywhere, huh? That's yes. weird. That's weird. That's weird. That's weird. So yeah, the 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 mix and match like build your own units, uh, unlocking more unit slots to be able to make your units bigger or to have more of them, to be able to mix and match abilities that you get to tweak the procs and priority targets on, being able to move them around on the board before every battle to respond to individual skirmishes. Uh, a lot of your abilities being on the equipment that you can put on these guys, it's it's disgusting. Um like I said, good luck everything else coming out this year. 
I got a piece of equipment that did something I'd never seen before. It had attack plus two and also attack plus 20%. Am I crazy? I have never seen that before where they do both on a single piece of equipment. Does, on a single does piece of equipment, they attack that's... more? They attack two more times? No, it's just added to the attack stat with like a, a flat upgrade and a percent at the same time. I guess that's the way to make it useful all the way through the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like I've seen that sort of thing before, but more in like a Diablo loot structure, not in like a, mm. a, a JRPG sort of loot structure. Anyway, looking forward to Unicorn Overlord. Did you uh, have anything else you wanted to say about? Yeah, but that's going to be me for the rest of the year. It's going to get old fast. Uh <laughs> Man, it's gonna it's gonna be weird when uh, at the end of this this year, uh, our top ten list has a Vanillaware game, an Atlas game, and a Falcom game, but there's no first party Sony anywhere to be seen. Yeah, I'll yeah. probably have multiple Atlas games. <laughs> yeah, I mean yeah, SMT that's... Five Vengeance and Metaphor Refantasio are this year, right? And Unicorn Overlord is technically published by Atlas. Wild shit. <laughs> Uh, speaking of games uh, we've talked too much about, I uh -huh. thought I, I was done uh, talking about Walkabout Mini Golf VR. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> well, I'd, I'd recently uh, like went and bought the big pack of like all the extra levels that are out. Yeah. And I finally tried Upside Town. Oh. Have, have you done this one? No. Uh, you should try that stage. Um. Because you load into it and you're in a subway station, but it's upside down, and oh you're like, "Oh, that's God. really cool." And then, then like you you hit you hit the ball and it goes halfway across the green and it goes into a glowy area and it sucks it up onto the ceiling, and then you have to play it on the ceiling. Like you don't teleport to the ceiling; you now have to hit the ball upside down. And then you go to the next hole and you're in a coffee shop, but you're on the wall. It's wacky. Like, okay, now I get where you're just, we're going to go all over the place. And then you go to the third hole and you're outside and you're in the middle of like a city block that's been inception clustered. And <laughs> oh, every, you're sick. in an MC Escher painting. Uh, that feeling where you're looking around in VR going, holy shit, happened all over again. Oh, man. <laughs> Like the vertigo, the the clenching, looking over the edge of something, it all came back. Man, that game is so fucking good. That game is so fucking good. <sighs> Are there so many good games? Game of the year was supposed to end, and then I was supposed to have time to uh -huh. go back and beat certain no, things and spend no time. more time. Oh, come on, guys! Come on. And then, and then I might have had time. To play Seven Rebirth this week, but the chat was mean to me and said, Beat Mario Sunshine. Why do they hate Seven Rebirth so much, Bob? Yep. That yeah, was that's definitely a, chat's fault. That's what happened, absolutely. I'm so glad you dragged me through that, too. It was so good. Just to be clear, Bob had the option to leave, started to do so at one point, then came back and said, We're too close now. I'm yeah, you gave me the option to leave when we were at five stars from the ending. <laughs> And I realized Giga Boots was a hostage situation. <laughs> Did you not? No, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't realize that. Wow. <laughs> I lose the stream all the time. Now, admittedly, I come back with food every time, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, you it... come back with pizzas. Have you never seen a hostage situation? <laughs> <laughs> The Uber Eats driver walks up to the house and he just acts like one of those emissaries in a hostage <laughs> situation. He's just like holding the food and terrified. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and get this out of the way now because I feel like talking about this now. Uh, who knows? Maybe someone's like, man, the news this week's too much of a bummer. I don't want to. I don't want to go through that. Hey, Chris. I am under the impression that on Saturday you are in fact doing... A Chris birthday donathon stream, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. What will you be streaming? Uh, well, ass ass assuming that uh, I don't immediately get thrown into Bart's nightmare, <laughs> uh, I will be streaming probably. I don't know. I haven't. I'll, I'll stream some game that I like a lot. 
Because that's what you start with when you're almost assuredly going to immediately be put into Bart's nightmare for five with, hours. I started with Mighty Number no. Nine. <laughs> you like that a lot, that's right? A game, yeah, that's a game you like a lot, Dan. You can't stop playing it. <laughs> oh, that's not. That's not what's happening here. <laughs> for some reason, I'm now imagining uh, that for the whole stream, Chris has to have an avatar where he's got the, the Dick the Birthday Board t-shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got Bart's Nightmare. We got Namco High, specifically the Homestuck character routes. And then I'll have chat vote on however many else I decide. It's, I don't know how long a route is, so if they're fairly short, they'll, they'll get like five or six. Uh, I'll review Boruto volumes one through six. I really need to find like a photo app that can fit into OBS and keep everything the same size as I left and right arrow through it. Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts because I played the fucking first two. Yeah. Might as well play the great one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Someone's upset. <laughs> chat will get to design a new sprite that I'll have to then use and live with forever. I'll open <laughs> like a photo, a photo box for references and then they will vote. It'll say Dick the Birthday Boy and Eat Pant. <laughs> uh, Redfall. Somebody's got to play through Redfall story and know what that is. It's provably false. <laughs> it's important. It's important for history. No, we're still waiting for him to finish it. Then we'll do it. <laughs> I think it's his finish. It's going to fuck you. Yeah, yeah, no right. doubt. <laughs> I think they shipped that performance mode and it was like, done. Yeah, I'm surprised we didn't hear about them shattering the studio already. <sighs> Don't worry, there's still a month left in this fiscal year. Shad <sighs> uh, uh, is the Damned and Killer is Dead. Those games are both good, and they are the lesser discussed Suda 51 games. Pro Final Fantasy VIII. Uh, the last time I tried this, they, they updated the game for the first time in like three years and broke all my mods and it wouldn't boot anymore. But we will do a more streamlined version of me showing you how to snap that game open. Silent Hill 1 through 3, I've never played any Silent Hill game. I rented Silent Hill 1 once as I was like, I was like 10. Uh -huh. I was like, why do people like this? And then took it back. Yeah, no, that's what happened to me too. I'm like, man, this is nothing like Resident Evil. This is not enjoyable for me to play. What the fuck am I supposed to be enjoying here? Why, why is there fog like three feet in front of me? There's so many fucking streets. I'm so goddamn lost. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, and, and a 3000 Mass Effect Andromeda, the final, but the final but thing even remotely related to Bioware, other than Anthem, which would be pointless because it's just a bad Destiny game. So. And you know what, if we if we hit. If we hit all those goals, don't do that, Dan, uh, <laughs> if we hit all those goals. Yeah, I'll have to get Game Pass again anyway. <laughs> so I so I guess I can boot Anthem and we can see if the Christmas decorations are still up. Because <laughs> the last update that game ever got was for the Christmas shit. And they put, I think they put up Christmas decorations in the main hub. That's so, so I would be curious to see if they are still up. That's, that's so fair. And somehow, so if somehow we burn through all of those, I'm going to stream... At least Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and maybe Tuesday. I don't know. We'll see how things go. <laughs> if somehow we get through all of those, mm -hmm. I do have a wave two. You don't oh. get to see it right. until we're through wave one. But there are, but I but I will say I will tell you one thing that's on it. You can make me play Glover. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> cool. Uh, and also, uh, Bob and I are playing Sonic Adventure 2 with Sarah Lene tomorrow. It's an adventure of my youth because I never fully beat that game. Because the true, 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 it's hard. Yeah, you, you shouldn't even bother all playing all that. Why would you? Fight? Because Just, that's how the story ends. Who cares? <laughs> but you gotta, you gotta fight the weapon and hear the song. It's all crazy. It's playing the guitar and it's the full version of the little bit they put at the title screen. And mm -hmm. you go super Sonic and it's right, very yeah, cool. cool stuff. Yeah. But it's really hard. Yeah, they put it behind stuff you shouldn't have to do, so it's, it's, it's who cares? It's really, it's really <laughs> difficult, but that game is very fun, and I'm very excited for it. I love every stream I've ever done with Sarla and I. Unlike uh, some people! <laughs> I was like, I also, just came from also, Sunshine. You uh, don't get to say that. <laughs> also, go uh, listen to our podcast about Nintendo Quest. 
Yes. yes, I've been very happy as more and more people rubbernecked at so, that episode of Cursed Content and went, oh my god, how bad is it? One moment. So, so, so Bob, Agro, let, 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 me, let, me, let, me, let me pitch an idea to you. Dan doesn't get to bring a movie to Blessed Blunt at this month. Agro gets to bring what? two. What? <laughs> <laughs> this is bullshit. No. No. This is... <laughs> Woo. I, I, if these this isn't even helping me. No, it's like if this is if this weren't to aggro movies, I'd be behind it. But oh god, yeah, I don't know. You're you're just setting up for aggro, one disaster. I need you to bring the most glacially paced, historically no. accurate movies you know. Oh, no. I hope you motherfuckers are ready for some director's no. cuts. No, <laughs> no, no. You know, in the fallout after World War One. <laughs> <laughs> some uh perhaps some overcorrections caused future events from that and i feel like we are at a moment just like that so chris maybe you should just no no see i'm i'm the mindset that we should have crushed germany even harder <laughs> okay it's uh, mm, uh well shit there goes that metaphor um <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, let's just boil it down to don't. <laughs> How about I get to bring in a movie? Otherwise, we end up with two historical boat films and I'll kill myself. <laughs> we'll workshop it. We have a while before we have to worry about it. Pod Lords! <laughs> oh, fuck. That's not. Why is that going? Okay, there we go. <laughs> At the switch in the music honestly sounds like this one's breaking now. <laughs> like there's a whole minute. <laughs> yes, that's right. The Pod Lords. Pod Lords such as B and Twelve, E Lee Broyles. Red Blaze 27, Suzu Shiro, Rado, Seven Shades of Aerith Gainsborough, WTF Spider Man, Mr. I Like Spam, Look at this dubious little creature getting up to mischief, DFW 3K, Muck Bun, Shiny Mew, Kristen, Behold the power of Hiho Bino. Okay, so this is the most deranged this has ever been. Uh huh. F all the way up until now, no new images. Right. Get ready for the rest of this. <laughs> uh oh. Didn't know Aggro helped with Hell Divers too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you guys found it because, yeah, that was the first thing I fucking thought. <laughs> it's efficient, damn it. Cooper Tank. Seven seconds till the end. Time enough for you to make some plans. <laughs> oh, the, oh, that part. It's 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 great. I don't know what. The, what I need to talk to his stylist. Yeah, this is like the fusion of Jinkaria and Sephiroth have like gotten us like the petty tyrant manager of a guitar store. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why does everything I get hyped for get canceled? Aww. Indigo Sykes. Rebecca Black vindicated. Belated congratulations on your Splatfest win. But it's Team Shiver. We already knew. I don't know. What was the Splatfest that Rebecca Black came up? I don't know. Fill the comments. Was it, was it like hanging with your friends or some shit? Was it about partying, partying? When someone asks, where are the good games this generation? Get ready to learn Japanese, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> A raccoon ready to bring rebirth. <laughs> that, mm, that really works. Uh, <laughs> something, uh, something about the expression is killing me. <laughs> he looks like motivated. This, I don't like this, this persona. <laughs> This, this raccoon, this raccoon isn't quite ready to deal with his new levels of sentience. <laughs> like I can just see his little raccoon hands reaching up, like they're they're stealing the planet from mother. 
Shinji16, and nothing concerning would like to remind you that you matter, you are valid, and you deserve to be happy. Is that is that the thing that that you get that Dante gets sucked into the other dimension to fight in DMC2? No, it I is a lot like it, but that that's Ken it, Bob. Remember I, the name? I can't remember the name of that game. Double daggers? Nope. No, it might be that. Is it? It's it's whatever the or same pop word was uh, was promoting heavily. Yeah. It's that game, but I can't remember what that yeah, game was. Yeah, I played it too, it's but I already... sequel to Devil Daggers, I think. I forget the Hyper name. Demon. Hyper Demon. Hyper Demon. Okay, I thought it was Demon something. Um, coming to you live from the Pokemon fan base. <laughs> <laughs> A lot happened in there. <laughs> One moment, we're going to see. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Don't worry about it. The Super Mim. This was always the plan. <laughs> <laughs> We've been waiting yeah. 15 years. Yeah, god I really, damn. <laughs> I really wanted to try and find like some good screenshot of RoboCop where a guy's like giving the Delta City presentation <laughs> and being like, Dan put Dan put that fucking Pokemon on top of that guy, but no such image exists, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> Sarlene. Fighters rollback update is live. Time to auto combo into level three super like it's 2018. <laughs> hey, that got me. That got me up to Supreme Kai rank. Jesus. Oh my God. Bearded Joe. Pleochrome. Krungle Spub. Doctor Agro gets to be Juge Leong, a great tactician trapped in the body of Alexander the Great's biggest simp. Dope. Yeah, the, the the dimmy the dimmy servant things are weird. You get a pig slip, and you get a pig oh, slip, no. you get a pig slip. Everyone oh. gets a pig slip. Oprah, why? Why is she like this? Yeah, Oprah would never do that. Ellen DeGeneres, on the other hand, first Doctor Phil, and now this. <laughs> Doctor Phil's always a dirt bag. Fox boy Sephiroth calling Cloud a good boy after he slurps up some Donbe for an ad was definitely not in my cards this week. That that same brand, I believe, also did a commercial, uh, like where an anime one where like a cute fox girl gives the Donbe to a salary man, and then did a tie-in later for Baki of the exact same thing, but the the fox is Yuji Rohan Mabaki. <gasps> I saw pictures of that go around oh and it was God. like, this can't be real. $3,000 car repair bill. Oh, oh, oh no. no. God. If I, I got a $3,000 car repair bill, I'd push the car onto train tracks and leave it. Yeah, though, no, that's kind of what happened to my car. <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry. Gaius Julius Caesar. I love fake Grand Order Caesar. He's so based. <laughs> Out of bleach gags, so I'm just gonna have you read Yu-Gi-Oh card names. Hot Red Dragon, Archfiend, King Calamity. Man, and they sure do shit. <laughs> yeah, that that looks fake. <laughs> it really, <laughs> it really does. It looks AI generated. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how many fingers does it have? <laughs> and. It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno! <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you very much to our Podlord! Thank you, Podlord! Thank you, Podlord! Thank you, Podlord. And if you'd like to become a Podlord, you can go to our Patreon at patreon.com slash gbpodcast. For as little as $5 a month, you get many benefits, such as early access to Chugging, Bleach, and Pokemon Go to the Movies, our two monthly anime review podcasts. You also get extended content for other shows, such as an extended gamer permissions for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. The game's already out, but if you haven't played it yet, go find out what's in it with us predicting it, especially those bonus ones. You definitely want to hear some of those. You also fund a monthly show, either a patron-exclusive show where you, watch, where you vote on a good thing, and then we have to watch that good thing and discuss it, of which Dan will not get to bring a category this month. What? Um, <laughs> <laughs> or a bad thing where we just fucking pick something awful and then and then watch it. And that, that shows public, but there is a commentary track for it that is patron exclusive. This month, uh this month, February's was Nintendo Quest. And you the ultimate unofficial Nintendo documentary. 
the most in, in unofficial con- and unauthorized <laughs> Nintendo documentary. And it's totally a documentary about Nintendo. Uh-huh. Excited to cover Nintendo 64 Quest when it comes out. Me too. I'm just going to be screaming for an hour and a half straight in the commentary track. Speaking of which, uh, do not risk watching nintendo quest without the commentary track many people have tried and failed <laughs> yeah no it is it is dangerous to go alone <laughs> it's you you it honestly you'd be better served watching paint dry than watching <laughs> nintendo quest without our commentary track um and if you don't have any money you can always help us immensely by spreading the word telling your friends rating us on thursdays rating us with a t on your podcast app of choice Oh, and like, subscribe, and leave a comment on YouTube if you're listening that way right now. That's uh, patreon.com slash gvpodcasts. So we've got news. They canceled that Twisted Metal game. Dan, we, Dan, we have to wait. That's in the industry burning down block with our special guest. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. No, no. He said we, not we, now. We ha- go, go away. We have to... We, can't, we, we have to... Go away, man. We'll- we can either pile it all at the front of news or the back. We can't go back and forth. So choose if you want to rip the pant aid off now. No, it's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll circle back around on that. Uh, so this isn't gaming related, but I think it's very funny. So we should talk about it. Hey, Bob. Hey, what's up? Apple has been developing an Apple car for 10 fucking years and finally gave up. They will not make the Apple car. Apple car. Okay. Yeah. They're done. They finally gave up. You know why? why? Some executive said, yeah, that's great. But how do we get margins as big as we get on phones on a car? Um, the, <laughs> the thought that you don't get as much of a margin from a car. than a fo- Yeah. They want to make, they want to make like $80,000 on a $110,000 car. The messed up thing is, I, I'm kind of surprised that they, they, they don't think they can. I feel like they realize that $110,000, they won't sell enough. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's true. doing that at lower prices, right? right? How are you going to make $26,000 on a $30,000 car? Something like that. Ele- getting into electric cars at this point is extremely dangerous because I expect China to just pop them like, here, we got our car approved for America. Tesla is now dead. Yeah, enough American companies are getting into it to give Tesla competition, you know? Right. The only, the only reason and, mm-hmm. we, we will have the electric car boom the second all the fucking lunatics that own car dealerships will stock them. Yeah. Because a lot of privately owned car dealerships are like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not carrying woke cars. Yeah, I'm not. It's, it's like, hey, uh, just curious, can I, can I get you guys to like carry one of these electric cars? They have a pretty high demand. And then the car dealer is just like, you sound like a cuck, bro. And we're like, oh, I guess they're not <laughs> yeah, gonna. That is. <laughs> I, honestly, <laughs> here, here's a non-gamer premonition. Uh, the laws to prevent direct market car sales will go away, and we will see car dealerships significantly decrease over the next decade as, God, as these companies so just go, yeah, you can pay like, you know, $800, $800,000 dollars and just have the car delivered to you, and it has you, you don't have to pay the markup of a dealership. Yeah, like yeah. Tesla already gets mm. to deliver cars like that, right? And I, I the only that reason I'm... every company, the only reason every company isn't doing it is because there are literally laws mm-hmm. preventing right. it in many states. In fact, I think fucking Ron DeSantis, that cuck, passed a <laughs> law saying Tesla's the only one allowed to do it here. Everybody else has to go through dealers. Cool. I love double standards. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah. So that would be neat. Uh, moving into gaming news. Tom Henderson from Insider Gaming got access to footage of Assassin's Creed Infinity, the live service hub for the future of Assassin's Creed. This is the definition of everything we said it would be. They're fucked. Not sustainable is my guess. So let's let's go over it, okay? He can't release the footage. Him receiving this footage was conditioned on him never releasing it. Right. It'll but he leak. can talk about It'll what it's in it. somewhere. The main focus, here's direct quotes from the article. The main focus of Infinity is a live service offering, which is all told via the modern day story. So you know that modern day story you've been wanting in Assassin's Creed since the PS3? Yeah. 
You get it now. Now you can have an actual story there. It has to happen in a hub. Let's describe the hub real quick before we even get distracted so you know the zone in which this fucking shopping mall that you're going to have your modern day story told is to start. Infinity will launch on the same day as Red and will contain several features that you would expect from a live service. There is a thing called The Exchange, which will be the item shop offering players the opportunity to purchase daily and weekly in-game cosmetics for Red's two protagonists Nawe and Yasuke. In addition to the exchange, Infinity also has a synchronization feature that allows the player to access projects for each protagonist. To explain them in their simplest for form, projects are mini battle passes what? with a narrative behind them. That will be, oh, one second, uh, yes, a narrative behind them offering players the ability to earn cosmetic rewards. Projects will be added throughout Infinity constantly, focusing on ma focusing mainly on DLC and new game releases, or even as a means of sustaining player interest during a lack of any new content. Oh, that's a brilliant idea. What if we make something to cover the times when our production system is so fucking bad we can't make anything? And the final quote. It's understood that the current strategy for Ubisoft with Infinity is to release a mainline game every two years with smaller experiences in between. Red is scheduled for later this year with Invictus, a multiplayer offering, being planned for 2025. Hexa for 2026. By the way, Hexa is being penned as the darkest Assassin's Creed game ever and will have a lead female protagonist currently named Elsa. There's... First of all, this is what Microsoft lied and said Halo Infinite was going to be. Remember the 10-year Halo Infinite plan where you'd boot it up and there'd be different campaigns yeah. inside yeah. Halo Infinite? Yeah, it was yeah. a lot mm -hmm. like the, the Destiny plan. Yep. <laughs> hey, hey, Ubisoft, do you realize that nobody's going to engage with this? You, you just said we're building the scam machine. People have to clearly see the scam machine and then climb into the scam machine. That's not going to happen. You should have just made normal fucking games. As it turns out, Destiny is a really hard, weird, weird thing to swing. And Destiny stopped being able to swing it after a certain amount of time. They're literally trying to make Destiny. Yeah, no, the people are going to going to buy red, be confused. They have to boot through this. Right. And then beat that game and never turn it back on. Right, because there won't be <laughs> if, real if things they... to do in between. From the sounds of this, it sounds like you're going to get weird mini battle passes that unlock cosmetics. So go just grind. Right. We turned My, the game into skull and bones. <laughs> I think I think players are starting to get sick of this. Like they can sense when the sole purpose of your thing is to get more money out of them. I honestly question if Red will do as good as a normal Assassin's Creed. Understandable. Like, I, feel like yeah. we'll, I feel like the the lead up marketing will focus way too much on this Infinity shit, and a, a decent chunk of people will be like, "No thanks." Like that sounds too complicated. Why? What? Isn't it just an Assassin's Creed game? I mean, and there's two other angles, too, of, like, I think some of the people who have, like, and I'm going back a bit, okay, to earlier Assassin's Creed, the appeal of those. Mm -hmm. Some people have fanaticism and interest in history that is extremely Anglo anchored. Uh -huh. So this being the Japanese one would not necessarily appeal to them. Uh, also, there's there's I, I don't know. You know what? How good it, it does hangs entirely. How how hot are the characters? That's that's all the most I, of the people I ever knew who loved Assassin's Creed cared about is those two points I brought. Up. <laughs> like, is it? The, I have to assume this is going to be the the Witcher style RPG one, so they can give you RPG stats, uh -huh. which will facilitate the infinite grind. Like, I can't assume it's going to be like Mirage. Like, the, I, it feels like Mirage is like here's the last normal one we'll ever make. And if you what go. you say is the case. They're planning to ship a Witcher every two years, right? Which that's that's not that's, just that's, an assumption Chris is making. That's I mean, basically they it, what they said during they that. They did it three Creed times draft. in a row. They did it three times in a row. I'm just saying, they if did that Origins, happens, two years Odyssey, two years Valhalla. So they yeah. made, they kept it up for three for three. Yeah, like, and it clearly wasn't sustainable because they had to take that big break. But it's okay, now they're managing a live her sub service hub yeah, on top like of that with battle passes. Hey, game industry, Call of Duty, Assassin's Creed. Who the fuck makes you think people want to boot into a thing to boot into another thing? Yeah, I don't know. Nobody at wants least, that. At least Call of Duty is 
the thing you're booting into is still Call of Duty. Like, it's still, it's a multiplayer shooter. No, no, Even the, Warzone, nowadays, the thing you're booting into is a fucking menu to boot into the actual game you want to boot into. Like, they added an abstraction layer. Yeah, yeah but, the, but the abstraction layer, people, I feel like people are more tolerant of, of, of an abstraction layer in a purely multiplayer-focused thing. Like, a more multiplayer-focusing, not purely. Mm. Meanwhile, this Assassin's Creed shit, it's like, why do I have to load into the Ubisoft store to play the game I bought? Yeah, it really depends on how they present all of this Infinity stuff. Will that feel like you're playing its own story and something exciting, or will it feel like a shop? Because it and sounds more like it'll feel like a shop. The thing that fucking sounds like a mall. I know, right? Yeah, it, it, it sounds like and some here, PlayStation here, Home shit. Like, you have to... Like, if, if I want to play Red, I have to boot up Infinity and enter through the gift shop to then lie on the table and Like, I Red. assume... I assume this isn't gonna have this either won't have a physical release or the physical release just won't be real like it'll be like you have to punch in this code to, to assign it to your account and that's it because well what going they're gonna by, have you uh, you're gonna be able to have a used game tie into this bizarre infrastructure no you won't going by what they did with call of duty which i believe this will mirror you mm -hmm. will stick the disc in you will try to boot the game and it goes bro you don't have infinity you need to do that. I can't boot this game. This game can't boot except for through that menu. Uh-huh. Yeah, so probably Infinity will probably be free. Right. And then Red is... And Red's on the disc, but also not really because you need to go through Man, Infinity. Man, you, you, you know what the low... No, no offense to people who like Call of Duty... Uh, not Call of Duty, Assassin's Creed, but when I think of, like, the most uninvested consumer... It's Assassin's Creed. Uh, yeah, and invested in what? So add like like any kind of obstacle to getting to Assassin's Creed will make them go do something else. I wonder. Like most susceptible to, you shouldn't add more steps into this specifically. Right. I wonder if you put it into rest mode, how it deals with that, because the Infinity abstraction layer should make all of these an always online nightmare experience, since it has a battle pass, and obviously they wouldn't let you. She's the battle pass, so it's got to be always online. Right. Man. So, I'm trying yeah, to think of people... I have to agree with you because you put it in rest mode and it shuts down the game. That's going to make a number of Assassin's Creed players just be like, fuck this. Right, because like, the, yeah, the people there's... that I've talked to, like the RPG Assassin's Creed, mm -hmm. are the people who will just dump 120 hours in because, yeah, they get home from work, they turn it on, they right. just do. Right, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, you, uh -huh. you don't... I turn if on the you, PS5, it's still in that game. Mm -hmm. I play two hours, I go to bed. Right. Yeah. If you add any layer to that, it, yeah. Yeah, it's I dangerous. Mean, like, and if, like, if it works, it could be fine. Like, I'll, I'll just drop Honkai Star Rail into rest mode, go back in, I'll load up right where I was, and after a second, the server goes, oh, wait a minute, load screen. Okay, you're right back in. Okay. If they yeah. can get it working, like, that'd be fine, but... Yeah, and, and don't there's the element of will Ubisoft this will do that. Like, how will this how how solid will this be when it launches? I bet not solid enough because they have to get it out faster because they're on fire. Right. I mean, I was like, surprised like the, that like they're they like, yeah, they're red comes this, out this year. Right yeah, by right. the end of the year. I'm like, that's insane. Yeah, that's what rumors were saying last year, too. Mm -hmm. I'm still surprised. And when they said it last like, year, I don't I'm believe like, sure. Uh -huh. I don't believe they're shipping outlaws and red this year. That's that just ain't happening. Wait, what's that? Oh, Outlaws is the Star Wars. Star, right? Star Wars Outlaws, yeah. yeah. It's, it's like, I don't know. Ubisoft also is... Like, I don't know. Will people sign on for this big behemoth when Ubisoft's cultural stock is pretty low? Like, assess, they have Assassin's Creed guys, but will Assassin's <sighs> Creed guys log on? I feel like there's a level of, no, Ubisoft is fine. Everybody's too hard on them. We turned Assassin's Creed into this. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I am terrified, though, that the impossible dream could work. Like, I, I know video game companies make large, bad decisions a lot. That's why we're in the middle of the crash. I feel like they have to have some kind of play and polling data that tells them there are enough Assassin's Creed cryptid whales that if they can just plug them into the matrix, <laughs> they will carry this project. I, I don't think they have shit for data 
In fact, I don't believe anybody making decisions at these companies now even looks at data. We're in the era of vibe-based executive decisions. It, I think it really does all come down to what Infinity is. If it is actually something people want to engage in and get some sort of character they're getting invested in, it might work. But if it is a shopping mall, I'm, I think that yeah, will just like, fail. Are, I, I'm ready are you going to gonna have... Are you going to have like a hub, like an in-game hub with fully rendered characters with writing that you're going to hang out with in this modern day thing across multiple campaigns? Because that sounds like what it's going to happen. Like you're going to have different, maybe even different people on this team are going into the machine because they have different ancestors and that's how the fucking animus works. Are you going to have that? You don't need to worry about that anymore. They actually t- wrote a thing into the story where anyone can go into anyone's memory. It's really dumb. Oh, the, well, okay. Uh, so, but, okay. but the, the well, core point is, will there be characters or will you boot into the visual novel cutscene? Here's, right. here's what's happening. It's going to be Skull and Bones. It's basically going to be the island town in that. So you're going to get a, a cutscene at the beginning that pretends it's going to be really epic and important. And then it'll just be rambling cutscenes, if ever again. There will be a hub. You can see other players in it. There is a shop. And then there's the dock. But in this, it will be an animus room. <laughs> you will literally be in one of these corporations for, you know, the technology in that game. Uh-huh. The animus technology group, whatever their name is. I already forgot. You'll be in their food court. <laughs> you literally what? leave I... to go to your, your facility and then jump into time to time jack. It's really brave they're giving this like a in uni- a didactic framing device. Mm. Or a diegetic framing device. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Abstergo. Now you have to now you have to write a plot for the framing device. They used to have to do that. <laughs> yeah, they, they used to be yeah, the and main they quit thing. for a reason. <laughs> Cuz they were like, uh, "Desmond, you will be Jesus Christ." Yeah, maybe they should t- tamper it down a little bit from that <laughs> and still have a cool contemporary story. I don't know how you do that, and it's massively it'd parallel be, multiplayer. It'd sort be of way. so funny if it was like, yeah, it's set, it's set in uh, the before time. You play as the ancient race, so you were all like the r- weird cyber future people that were from ancient times. Spoilers for history, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> obviously. I'm very fascinated and incredibly concerned. All right. And that's the Assassin's the, Creed news. The, honestly, the question, like, if this makes the normal amount of money of an Assassin's Creed, that's not enough. Right, of course not. No. Like, this is, this is unarguably more expensive than just making an Assassin's Creed would be. Uh-huh. So, I don't think it's going to work out from that angle. No, no, it'll make them infinite money forever, because that's what it has to do, or else the whole company burns down. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm sure they're shitting their pants once uh, that Avatar game did not sell as much as Hogwarts Legacy, which they probably really needed it to. Yeah, yeah, any person with a brain could have told them that Avatar wouldn't sell as well as a Hogwarts Legacy game. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. Like, I feel like from the executive brain, it's the same thing. Like, people were like, I got depressed after seeing Avatar because Pandora would never be right. real. Right. I'm sure some executive saw that and popped the biggest boner of his life. Oh, yeah. That happened because his brain doesn't work and he doesn't <laughs> understand how that doesn't quite but, translate. But people said the same shit about Hogwarts and then that became the best-selling game of the year. I mean, people... Yeah, people... That was all the appeal of Hogwarts. Like, I I get to be in Harry Potter. I get to make a wizard. Right, yeah, but, but it but, works there, and it does it here. And I feel like anyone with a brain could have figured that out in advance. I feel like they could have looked at the uh, popularity of the two Universal Parks and known immediately, <laughs> people <laughs> care about the Hogwarts one. People don't care that much about the Pandora one. Rocco Bodhi just goes to it because he feels bad for it. <laughs> There's a Pandora one? Yes. There is a I Pandora's one. Right. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Yeah. It might be Disney. Yeah. But it's one Disney of it's, it's like Rose and the Fox now. Yeah. Yeah. So it, didn't they put it? Oh, didn't they put it in fucking Animal Kingdom? I yeah. think so. Yeah. Fuck and nobody you. cares. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, you know you have a history of like seeing how Harry Potter games sell throughout the years, right? You know, until and, that sort of type of game wasn't made anymore, and then go, this is a triple A immersive one of these and understand why that sold in a way that you could have looked at Avatar and gone, 
How did the last Avatar game sell? You had an Avatar game at the same time as that movie that did Gangbusters. How did that sell? And also, Harry Potter has a much longer history. Right. Like generations of people. Yeah, generations realize. of people are excited for Harry Potter. Yeah, Avatar has two films. Maybe if they had, maybe if they had gotten that game out a year earlier on top of the second movie. I don't know. I still think you could look at the sales of the 360 original and be like, yo, this didn't do dick. Which, which <laughs> it's that, also that made Avatar by our thing, uh, <laughs> That Avatar thing didn't bomb, but I, I think the number was like 1.9. And I'm like, that's not nearly what you would no. want after a six year in development Avatar thing. No, that's not good. For you them. need five minimum. Uh, let's go to aggro news. I just have a slight PSA for anyone affected by it, um, as, as you may have heard, because the events are happening. Uh, sea of Thieves and Grounded are both coming to PlayStation consoles. Uh, you are going to need a Microsoft account to play Sea of Thieves. Full stop, as I understand it. Huh. Uh, so if that's a deal breaker for you. It's uh, a very frustrating point of data for me. Yeah. That's uh that I mm, every time I, I need another account it. to play a game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, god yeah. damn hey, it. <laughs> hey Sony, you tell these motherfuckers no. Right? <laughs> Especially Ubisoft. Why does Ubisoft get to have their own achievement system on top of yours inside a single player fucking game? Have some balls and say fuck you no. What are you going to do? Not ship on PlayStation? Do it. <laughs> right. Like, e either have the tyrannical walled garden ecosystem or don't. Like, if, 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 if I'm going to exist under this totalitarian regime, it better fucking work right and keep all the undesirables out. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Yeah, the, the trains yeah. better run on time. <laughs> Look, you can either, like, be this horrible closed box or you can allow people to do whatever. All I'm saying is if you're going to do the second one to any degree, it has to the doors have to open completely. You have to let me install VR chat on the PS5. That's, <laughs> that's, that's it, man. Uh, additionally, you can play Grounded without a Microsoft account, but you will need one for cross-play, cross-saves, and whatever shared world features that, means to Grounded players. That's I, that's fine. Like that's a like you you need our account for cross-play is a much more palatable thing to me than no, just have one. Fuck you. Mm -hmm. Man, Bob, I hope you remember your Microsoft account password for our Sea of Thieves stream. We did a Sea of Thieves stream. We're going to. No! <laughs> uh, I don't even, I don't remember the password to my fucking Microsoft account. They send me a text message whenever I try to log in. <laughs> well, obviously, like, your code. obviously, Bob, Uh huh. I'm going to buy it on my system. And then since we'll have the wife swap presumably going for the rest of time, you get to play it from your place while I stream me playing it from my place and we get to do the <laughs> ultimate Sea of Thieves experience. Jesus. See what's been going on over there. Uh, We're gonna boot that game up after these. What it came out five years ago or something? Six, maybe more. I think it's six. It's or still gonna seven. feel empty. It's still gonna feel like there's nothing to do. <laughs> it's like, I, I don't think that's true. Guy, I think the, it'll probably feel like a decent game now. The guy from Monkey Island's like Guy Fresh is just like, please kill me. I'm so tired of being in this dead world. I assume all of those things, all the crossovers, were only there for three months and had to be removed. Because that's how a lot of Microsoft stuff works. I think that is there forever. Okay. I think in Sea of Thieves, that thing is there forever. I hope to God it is there forever. Anyways. Um, hmm, how do we want to do this? We want to avoid the Chris, the industry burning down news. So let's go to Bob. Hey, Bob. Sure. I, can, I got uh, news. Okay. Yeah. Prove uh, it. Near 3 has been teased a few times. Okay. Uh, during a recent concert, the, they put up the word repent with a three instead of the E. Mm. Uh, and also Yokotaro tweeted th reincarnation with three instead of the E in that as well. <gasps> uh, these could also be both just be referencing, oh, the third near game is this mobile phone game that's going to be dead next month. You should play it. Uh, mm. Hopefully it's not that. That is called near reincarnation. Uh but that would be really lame for them to even try and make a thing I'm, out of. Yeah, like, I mean, the fucking Nier Automata sold, like, 
8 million copies by now, they're making another one. Yeah, it'd be uh, really stupid if they weren't. <laughs> and, cons and considering the remake of one sold like almost nothing in comparison, expect another hot girl to be the protagonist of this new one. Oh, no. The world is in danger. Why? Uh, well, all, the, all, the world's, all the world's dumbest contrarians will come out of the word and be like, well, Nier Automata is also a good game. And I'm like, yes. And it, so is the original. Do you, do you see the power of being good and also having a hot girl as the primary character of your game? Do you see the, do you see the, the power gap that causes <laughs> beyond right. pure quality? You don't sell the steak, my boy. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, no, it's everyone gets upset about that. It's so insane. It's like, no, that got a lot of people invested to play a good game that you like, and now the, now the franchise is safe, and you can expect more games from it. No, hot lady bad. Oh my god, okay. What's weird, up? very weird breaking news. Uh, currently, an EA sports game is breaking because it did not anticipate the leap day. Yes, I saw that earlier. You it's have like, to yeah, manually have to set the <laughs> clock to March 1st. <laughs> Great. Are you serious? <laughs> what, where, what is... Come on. Y2K is real. I'm sorry, I would love to race you online right now, but I'm in the day that never existed. <laughs> Y2K was real. I, I, every time this comes out, I, I get indignant because people are like, Y2K was overblown. It's like, no. Hundreds of millions of man hours were, were spent averting the problem, and the result is that people pretend the problem never existed. Right, no. It, uh, it, Humans are funny. Y2K didn't cause any disastrous effects, but obviously it had to be fixed. <laughs> um, Bob was talking about the cataclysmic event that was uh, avoided Y2K, yeah. not the programming bug that could have caused yes, it. Uh, right. Yes, I know, but but I keep seeing people going, I've I've had so many boomers go, people said Y2K would be a big problem, didn't nothing happen. It's 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 kind of similar. I, I know there was a string of videos I ran into all around the same time that were like, hey, you know why we don't talk about the hole in the ozone layer anymore? It's because we banned the things that caused it, so it stopped being a problem! That is literally an example of us fixing it! And I'm like, oh. I didn't know that. <laughs> yep. Same thing with acid rain. <laughs> anyway, say Bob News. Let's... Um, uh, Remedy uh, reacquired the rights to Control the, is a franchise from 5 of 5 games. Dope. So that includes Control, Codename Condor, and Control 2. Dope. Um, I don't know what Codename Condor is, but I think they've talked about it before. Yeah, they, they brought that up before. It is be just some kind known of that it's... multiplayer thing, I think. Yeah, I think it's multiplayer-based. Huh. It is clearly related to Control. That's about all we know. Okay. That's that's so sick. No, that's great. Remedy, Remedy's doing <laughs> so good. I feel happy for them. <laughs> yeah, it is great to see them on an upswing. They're like, yeah, we're not a giant American corporation. We're good. <laughs> are you guys all right? I'm like, no, we are not all right! <laughs> Uh, I guess they're purchasing it, to, purchasing it uh, with a max transaction cost of 17 million euros. I don't know what this means, <laughs> that, that, but that's how much it could cost them to repurchase it. But that apparently includes the development cost of those games that were already paid to them from 505. And that there's all sorts of other nonsense here with, okay, it won't actually be that much as a lump sum. Is it? it that thought doesn't take into account the sales of those games and everything like that. It's a bunch of complex uh, jar or like financial jargon. Yeah. Okay. So that's happening. Good for them. Yeah. Uh, that's really important because Alan Wake and Control are really, really tightly linked together. <laughs> yup. Now, how do we get Quantum Break? I wonder if they can reacquire that or if they even want to. The funny thing is they they did Quantum Break with Microsoft around the same time that uh, Sunset Overdrive was done by Insomniac for Microsoft. They still own the rights to Sunset Overdrive. Right. Insomniac does. Oh, Weirdly do enough, yes. Huh. So they could release that. PlayStation owns Sunset Overdrive is a thing that's apparently the case. I honestly think, hey, nothing's going on. Yeah, why not, man? Port it to the PS5 and make it run at 60. Fuck it. You got something better going on, Sony? Let me check uh, what games you're releasing this year. Is it <laughs> nothing? 
Shout out to Helldivers for being Sony's only game this year. Right? Yeah. They had a couple more, you know, but then something happened. <laughs> something we can't talk we about. We don't know. Yet. We don't know what that could be, though. <laughs> we don't know what that could be. Hey, Bob, what other news do you have? I brought up the Dragon, uh, Dragon Ball Fighters thing earlier. That does come out for PS5 and, or in Series X today. Or mm -hmm. I guess it's both series consoles. It's on the S. It has to be on the S. Is it on? Yeah. Is yeah, it? everything's on the S. I wonder. We'll fucking hear when something isn't on the S. Do you, do you think do you think it looks worse than last gen somehow? Because that's happened <laughs> no, a couple I don't, of times. I don't even want to look. I oh, probably. Okay. I, I'm willing to bet that the, that the Xbox One X version looks better. Um, interesting thing about the rollback in this apparently it doesn't work on certain modes but the only ones I saw were like it's when six real players yeah. are in a versus match like it can't do that and that's to my knowledge <laughs> that's not something any video game has ever done was rollback that is exactly yeah, that seems pretty hard that is exactly too many Gokus <laughs> yes that might be too many Gokus <laughs> Yeah, for anyone who's not exactly sure what we're talking about or implying here, uh, getting rollback netcode working across six players in a fighting game. Yeah, simultaneous, the, not taking turns. Uh-huh. Yeah, simultaneous, and you snap back and forth in yeah. and out. Like, that That seems like it'd be a fucking nightmare to try and get working. Yeah. I'm surprised it works at all. Um, A new Terminator game was announced. Uh, Terminator Survivors. It's going to be on early access on PC in October 24th. But it's it, a real game, right? It's a real game. It's an open world survival game in the Terminator universe. Oh, so you go I around. Hate I'm interested in that. <laughs> <laughs> this is the same feeling I have when they announce a new Terminator movie. I'm Jesus. like, ah, damn it. But yeah, in the big open world, you get to meet like other famous characters from the Terminator universe, like uh, the guy from Salvation. Everyone loved him. They don't mention him. <laughs> <laughs> they do mention uh, the main guy. Who, I'm, my, the name eludes me now. John John Connor. John Connor. <laughs> that 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 John Connor will be there. Is Sarah Connor there? Probably not. That wouldn't make any sense. I don't, I don't know. I don't know when this, this is takes a, place. This it could is take after place the apocalypse. In the 80s. <laughs> I mean, if he could, anything is possible. with The Terminator timeline right, that makes no it's sense. It's so fucked. Is J.C. Denton there? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> They're like Embracer. Just let us have this. Uh, we Whoops. just asked nicely. Uh, uh, something that really surprised me: a new Vindictus game was announced. It's called Vindictus Defying, Defying Fate, and this is related to that MMORPG from 2010. But this is a single-player action RPG. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh my God. Right? I just remembered Vindictus. What the hell? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? When am I? <laughs> Where am I? I guess that's something to do with all the assets for the game that doesn't exist anymore. I think you can even still play that game. And this ha obviously oh. has all new assets. Like, it's Jeez. like actually high-end looking. This looks cool. Fuck. Yeah. I remember you the know, old between, one being cool, right? Between the, between this and the thing Psy Games talked about that apparently still isn't canceled, we have several Dragons Dogma likes coming out soon. <laughs> um. Also, that Ender Magnolia Bloom in the Mist that we heard about last week during the Nintendo Direct, and they didn't announce any other versions. Now this week they have announced. Oh, it's coming to everything else. Oh, okay, cool. Is uh, is this is related to Ender Lilies, right? Yes, this is the sequel to that. Okay. Uh, it's going to be on PC Early Access March 25th. So that's next month. And if you're watching this after we've recorded it, uh, it that's fact. tomorrow. That starts, or March starts tomorrow, or now. Smooth. <laughs> tomorrow is March. After that, the next day will be April. Yes. You will be dead by next week. <laughs> Bob, stop. You're casting a spell. <laughs> Bob's Bob is both history's greatest war criminal and the world's most powerful geomancer. <laughs> Please sit down. <laughs> they turn into bones. Um, uh, anyway, let's uh, other things that were in that Nintendo Direct that have now been announced separately. Uh, Raynatus. 
Reynatus? Reynatus? That's what I, I've been I saying. Don't know. I don't know. Uh, that thing that looks vaguely Kingdom Hearts like set in modern day Japan. <laughs> the main thing I think when I look at Reynatus is so Square Enix isn't making Verum Rex, are they? <laughs> That's the thing you're thinking. That's why Nojima is working on this. Uh, and like the the guy looks like the Verum Rex guy. Yeah. Like he has the plaid even. Okay, so you know how one image is the movie The Whale? <laughs> Every time I see Reynatus, it's the guy doing that, and I'm like, that's this is the whale again. Yes. I'm only ever gonna see this picture. <laughs> It's that one picture that we had for Spider-Man 2 forever. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's actually coming to other consoles and it's coming to America. Sick. Thank God. I knew there was, there, it, it just felt impossible. Like I feel, feel like it would be like a glitch in the matrix. If a game Yoko Shimomura was composing for did not get an American release. Mm -hmm. Like that just seems like, I feel like that music alone would be like, we should give this to the Americans. <laughs> Uh, in my last bit of news here, uh, Sega's forming the a global transmedia group. Oh no! Uh, they are appointing Justin Scarpon. Scarponi? Scarponi, I probably yeah. yeah. Uh, I, but he's going to head it. Uh, he's apparently a former Disney exec who worked at the oh, Japanese no. side of Disney. Oh, no. Um, on Line, Disney, Sum Sum, uh, Kingdom Hearts, and Marvel Future Fight. I know one of those. No, that's not true. I know too. Right, all those things were were successful. I think. Yeah, and I, I guess he's did a lot of like helping Disney expand into a like the Asian region in general over there. So it went to China and stuff as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, the whole point of this division is to do more stuff like the Sonic live action movie. Man, my prediction that video game adaptations were, would replace the MCU, which I made as a horrible, cruel joke to make <laughs> everyone upset, sure, sure is starting to look like it uh, yeah. may actually no, be absolutely. the direction things are going. I uh -huh. mean, one of these is on the rise, and the other one is getting Thanos didn't, snaps. Wasn't, didn't we hear that, like, yeah, the, the, one of the John Wick guys is working on a Streets of Rage movie? There were rumors of that. Yeah, there's, there's, it's Hollywood, but yeah, that was in the works. I don't know if that's... Uh, real quick, though, we got to talk about this. Because, you know, we talk about video games. We don't talk about movies. Have they fucking pivoted yet from the fucking snafu with the MCU villain? Have they done a single fucking thing to tell us what uh, the... That is... That is rumored to be why the Ironheart Disney Plus show had to be extensively reshot, like over half of it reshot, because Kang was apparently a big part of it, and they have completely removed him. Okay. I, I think on the DVD cuts, I think they even like removed mentions of him in various things on Disney Plus or in DVD cuts. This seems crazy that they aren't just pivoting and changing the actor. I mean, they did it with uh, the guy in the Iron Man films because allegedly that one executive so racist, they're like, they'll never tell the difference between these two completely different black dudes. Yeah. God. Which I still just am reeling over this many years later it, because I went it, to the, the like I read it too and I'm like, that's the that's a different actor. Is yeah, I'm like, confused. Really, is this supposed to be that character? They're acting like it's him. They're the current the current plan from the all the all the MCU rumor accounts, but except this seems like it's actually probably happening, is like, nah, they're just gonna have him like get annihilated by Doom and then Doom walks up and takes his place as the protag as the antagonist of the next MCU arc. I mean, that's smart. Doom's a better choice than Yeah, that's definitely Kang. more more exciting. I'm sorry if you're in deep enough where you're like, no, Kang is cool. No, Doom is cool. No, Kang is not cool. I'm a comic guy. Nobody fucking... Kang is like C tier. Yeah. I will say, they actually... The, the rumor that that Fantastic Four movie is a period piece makes me want to see that movie. That it's supposed to be set in the 60s. Mm. That would be cool. It gives it anything. Yeah. That's it for Bob News? Yep, that's it for my news. Okay, Chris, can we drive around the crater? <laughs> we got a couple things before the crater. Great. Uh, so Nintendo is suing the devs of Yuzu. Uh, let, let's get this out of the way. They don't have any legal grounds. The fact Yuzu had a Patreon doesn't matter for shit. If you see anybody saying that it mattered, they're fucking wrong. They're full of shit. They don't know what they're talking about. Nintendo's in, Nintendo has two goals. One is to harass them to scare anybody out of trying to do anything with the Switch 2. Yeah. Right. It's just, it's just, and two is 
they want to say, well, you have you have to pull the encryption keys from your switch to make Yuzu work or or pirate encryption keys. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and, and those are ours. So that that's copy that that's copyright. That's it's different from just emulation. So take it down. So they want they want that part of the D, uh, DMCA is, uh, stress tested because it's never been proven in court yet. This is so desperate. Yeah. Um, I saw some people online, not even necessarily Nintendo, uh, trying to imply that the Patreon offers something more than what's made you publicly You get newer available. versions. And, but Eve, that doesn't matter. But yeah, it's a beta. It's not like this is our exclusive better version of the software. Could, you could, you could, they could sell it and Nintendo couldn't do shit. We went through this with Sony and Bleem. Mm -hmm. Like, guys... You can, you're not allowed to, even you're not, you can even sell the emulator. That right. is legally fucking, has been proven in court that you're allowed to do it. I mean, what do you think the analog consoles are? Yeah. Yeah. Like, why do you think Nintendo can't go after the PCD comps? Because they're not distributing, distributing anything owned by Nintendo. Yep. So anybody saying that like, this is uniquely different, which gives Nintendo ground is wrong. It's just Nintendo seeing if they can will hard enough for the law to change. Right, and really, I don't think they intended to ever really go through... They wanted an out-of-court settlement. They wanted to scare them out of this. They want the easy way out. Mm -hmm. I don't think Nintendo yeah, I, legitimately I, I wants like, to drag this out for years. <laughs> I feel like what will happen is either Yuzu will just... Go, okay, guys, they're, 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 we can't afford litigation fees. We're just going to go away. Or they'll fight back and Nintendo will give up in a little bit. Like, la last year, when Dolphin tried to get on Steam and Nintendo said, don't. They right. implied like they were going to come after Dolphin and Dolphin said, we talked to a lawyer. We know what the fucking law is. Bring it on. Like, they put up a, bl a <laughs> right. blog post that was basically like, we're not afraid of Nintendo. We we have legal adv advisement that say we're fine. And Nintendo never did anything. Mm-hmm. So, no. like, this is purely a preemptive thing to try and stop this from happening to the Switch 2, which it won't, because for the record, and if you're a PC guy who's being preemptively smug about a uh, Switch 2 emulation, the only reason the Switch, their Switch has an emulator, got one so fast, and has one that's as good as it is, because NVIDIA fucked up massively. Massively. Yeah. Like, I think launch switches have, like, a hardware exploit, that, like, a hardware level exploit to let you pull shit off it that can mm. never be fixed. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it's hardware. No, it's true. They engineered like they a in very insecure system and then later had to do a revision that fixed it, but the Pandora's box was open at, by that point. It didn't matter. Uh, the Switch 2 is definitely going to be radically harder to emulate, not only because this will undoubtedly be a tighter run boat like this. One... Apparently, the reason um, the Switch is Switch Two part of the reason it came along as late as it was supposed to this year is because they didn't take an off-the-shelf part for the SoC. They made Nvidia make a custom SoC designed specifically for the Switch Two this time. So, one, not a reused Tegra, not mm -hmm. like last time. Okay. Two, the higher-end hardware is absolutely going to make this harder to run because it's going to be able to use its tensor cores and other things that are built in. In fact, I think one of the things in the leaks so far for the Switch 2 is that it even has AV1 encoding, which shows you how cutting-edge some of the parts of this will be. AV1 encoding, by the way, we use that for our live streams, and it's like, I can spit out a 16 megabit file that's 4K and looks great. God damn, that would help some video games slim down. Their mm -hmm. cutscenes being able to be absolutely tiny and still look good. And I assume that, that like that's not a thing that got integrated until like the 4090. No, yeah. The 4000 series GPUs are the only GPUs with an AV1 encoder. That's why we bought one. Okay. That is part of why we bought one. So like this is very cutting edge in a number of different ways. Uh, it being a custom chip, it being this cutting edge. And the problem with the Switch 1, it, I, I absolutely do think Switch 2 is going to be a lot more secure. Yeah, so it's it's just it's just Nintendo doing the thing giant corporations do where they swing their weight around. Like would will, thunk. Would it Whoa. it'll have a bad effect if they win. I don't even think it'll get to the point of them winning. Like I think it'll go away before that even happens. By the way, we this was another rumor is that Nintendo is Nintendo currently plans to ship the Switch 2 in quarter 1 of next year, but yes. is willing to push it even more, to which I say push it as long as you want if all scalpers die. 
Like if you have so many yeah. units that it's impossible for them to scalp. Yeah, because they get to ramp production the whole time, right? The worst thing that can come out of them ramping production the whole time is just that a unit leaks. But without games, what good is that going to do you? Yeah, yeah, it can only make me more excited because they'll show off the, what, what it does to old games. Ooh. You know, if it does anything before it launches. Right, because that stuff's always usually up to the last minute. Um, like, yeah. What's yeah, going to happen? Will they not be able to sell a Switch 2? Oh no! Yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't think yeah, that that's like, like really no. going to be a problem, right? In, unless unless they get unless they get 3ds brand again and go, it's th it's five hundred dollars. Oh. Yeah, I, I don't, don't think they'll do that. Yeah, I, I don't, don't think, think they'll so. do that. I think they would rather put Sony in the fucking earth, right? I mean, they even <laughs> took the, the, the yeah, cost of <laughs> the, the, the production cost of having an OLED out. Like they didn't go with that. They wanted the cheaper LCD, right? But I think uh, people were saying it's supposed to be 1080p, so at least it's not an LCD that's 720p that many years later. Yes, which is what I was expecting. But uh, yeah, no, I'm 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 with you, Chris. Push it back. You know the reason the N64 got delayed is because they were waiting for a strong lineup of first-party software to launch with it, and that's one of the best. Like most of my favorite N64 games are in that first little chunk. There, mm -hmm. they did a great job providing that software. You do that with the Switch too. <laughs> The PS5 will be dead. Like, there is a legitimate case where it's like, yeah, they put out, like, four Game of the Years on the Switch, too. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be rough. That's going to be rough. Like, I mean, by the, if, if the Switch 2 launches in the end of next year, then the, the Xbox will already be gone. So, so it'll just be Sony. He'll be, like, all focused on Sony. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but let, let's move on. Sure. Uh, Gundam Breaker 4 is going to have a full English dub featuring returning voice actors from the Gundam franchise. That's insane. Maybe, maybe Bamco's decided, oh, we should try again. Like, we should try with anything we make. Right. We haven't like, done that in a while. They, they, unless it had Dragon Ball in the name. Right. Van and Bamco literally stopped dubbing basically anything they didn't literally have to, like Dragon Ball. <laughs> um, I really hope we get Brad Swell back. Uh, I don't care who voices Amuro and the in that origins stuff i really don't i was like i don't give a shit i want bad brad swale <laughs> no yeah. you're right yeah it's they, they didn't give any specifics they just said it will feature an english dub from veterans of past gundam works that's dope uh we have breaking news oh yeah uh Mega Man avatar gear and photo frames and stickers are appearing at street fighter 6 this month <laughs> Oh my I, god, why does okay. he look like that? He's <laughs> beautiful. Look at him. Like, okay. My board uh, is sort gorgeous. Uh Capcom, you have to make you have to make a Mega Man game now. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Also, God, why is it Avatar costumes? Make make, make a Ryu <laughs> costume, please. This is so bad. How did you how did you make NES box art Mega Man look even worse? His eyes look fucked up. Look, there's someone at Capcom who is that's his whole job now. To Just make, to make it uglier over the years. Yes. <laughs> I I wish they hadn't been so cowardly by fan response to box art Mega Man in, in Street Fighter versus Tekken. I feel like box art Mega Man should have kept showing up like he's this weird alternate version of Mega Man who's like a 40 year old man. I hate I hate that Mega Man because we got the <laughs> worst, think... most phoned in Mega Man content around that. And then they're like, you love this. And I'm like, I didn't think about it once. And I had the fucking box. Well, yeah, obviously, that, that kind of thing's a lot funnier when Mega Man isn't a corpse. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, it kind of works for aggro, though. <laughs> Finally, part, part of the thumbnail, the game scent is announced. <laughs> it is a box that, I guess, has an oil heater in it and essential oils or scented oils or whatever inside it or perfumes. I don't fucking know. I assume it they're is, Juicero it, packs. <laughs> Uh, it will use AI to determine what is on your screen and release scents such as forest, gunpowder, explosions. Okay, we got to talk. Wasn't this in a gaming in the 2020s gamer premonition? Didn't someone come in with the shit post prediction? That was smell -o vision I feel like Agro would have done that to us. I know, right? I, I think I said it while we were recording. I don't think I put it in the episode. Okay, here is the sense that they the sense that they give you on their website. Okay. Gunfire. No. 
forest. Maybe. Racing cars. No, definitely not. <laughs> storm. Okay, I guess. Explosions. And you can you can turn the scent you can you can have it release some sort of neutralizing agent from the app, allegedly. Those scents suck. Yeah. Oh, there's some more on there's more on the synths page. There's more God. on the synths page. So okay. uh clean air, that's the neutralizing one. Right. Blood. <laughs> One second. Okay. One second. We're in an SNL skit. This isn't real. <laughs> this is a mad TV skit. They're like gamer sense. Now with cum, blood, piss, explosions, ocean. death. Wait, ocean. Well, ocean. Ocean. Okay. okay. <laughs> the Oaken. Sports arena. And fresh cut grass. You know. This, you can buy, you can buy this already. Dan Wave 5. No. How much is it? $150. I can't oh God, I can't weird. believe it's actually real and they're selling it. You what? You can already buy it. You, it, could, it could be here by Saturday if you have Amazon Prime. Jesus. What games does it work on? It uses, it uses AI. AI. It works on all of them it. badly. Real-time audio <laughs> cues are processed by GameSense groundbreaking AI to release synths that correspond with on-screen action. Oh, it's so it's using audio. It's not even using the video. Right, so what, what's going to happen, okay? We're going to be <laughs> playing a, a Star Wars game. Someone's going to use dubstep lightning, and it's going to be like, oh, that was a fart. Release the gas. <laughs> <laughs> this is the prototypical idea that sounds good while you and your friends are drunk. But if you actually think about it for like three more seconds, the problems start piling up <laughs> and you don't do this. I can't. State of the art adapter. As you dive into the game, our patent pending adapter captures audio in real time. AI analysis. Audio is swiftly processed in the cloud. Game since AI <laughs> sifts through the sound, pinpointing key, key, key cues and events. Sent release. In mere seconds, the chosen scent is released through the atomizer, syncing perfectly with on-screen events. The biggest revolution in gaming in decades. I want to be very, very clear about this. Mm -hmm. I am not bringing a scent-releasing device <laughs> into my home that hooks up to the internet in any way. Now, now game scent, I'll buy this if you release uh, unwashed for 500 years Mithra from Xenoblade 2 is a scent. You have to, get it. You have to put her on the bottle. I have to insert it in there. Jeez. I play Xenoblade 2 till we get to that scene and it just empties the whole bottle into the room. The paramedics have to struggle to resuscitate me. They wonder what the hell was going on that it smelled like this. Nobody can actually pinpoint what, it, what the actual scent is. This is the worst. Maybe they can partner with Yoko Taro for the next near game. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's worth noting we can do two audio streams to the internet when streaming. So we can just put the gameplay audio on that second audio stream and you at home with your own game set <laughs> can synchronize smells with us by just playing that audio stream right out into I, your game mm, set. I need to know what like is in this box like is it an oil is it a liquid can i can i fill my own cartridges can i put dr pepper in there can i buy gamer girl bath water and it shove has, it in the machine it, it looks like the fucking cylinder to a revolver <laughs> when you take the cover off it <laughs> Can, can I put like 38 plus P in there and mount it sideways on my wall? And the first time I, it registers a gunshot, it just ends oh, me. <laughs> easy to refill cartridges. Oh so God. you can presumably put whatever the fuck you want. And I guess you have to tell it what's in each chamber because it only has six chambers. The chambers make it look like it's some sort of device from Resident Evil. <laughs> No, it's yeah. true, yeah. Oh my god. If if that's like fully customizable, you can sell like packs per game. Oh no. I'm sure that's I'm sure that's their intent. That, that's their hope. Will anyone do it? <laughs> well will will Square Enix, because they get real stupid when you say the AI is like, here's the Mako scent. Oh no. Now you get to find out what <laughs> Mako smells like. Just shoving gamer sups in every hole. <laughs> Hey, 
uh, Hollow Stars English collab. <laughs> I I like I like that the the back of this thing has an HDMI in or just a stereo jack in. You get to choose what you're tuning into. This really means this works with anything. You could be listening to an album. What's a jazz album smell like? <laughs> God, weird. It smells like a race car. <laughs> Ooh, God! I bet this adds. If you have to, if you plug HDMI into it, does it add latency to your game? Now that's the funniest thing. It doesn't have pass through. Your your HDMI how, goes in, nothing how, comes out. How, hey, how is how, he, What do you do that? Are you sure you're not just seeing the wrong side, and there no, is a the, pass out on the, the other side? The back end just has a bunch of inputs. No, yeah, but there's another side. That's not the device. That's the that's the adapter. So perhaps there is a, an out on the other side of this thing I am looking at. If you see it, you let me know. I'm looking at the product page right now, and all I'm seeing. Yes. Oh, let me look at the media. Let me go back uh, to their website. What is up? Yeah. Why is there this breakout box? Breakout <laughs> box for cents. <sense>. Yeah. <laughs> Oof. God. This is such a nightmare. Yeah, they how? How did they release this? Buy a kit for $149.99, save $30 <laughs> and get six full oh. set cartridges. Does that thing have like a now minimum I, room size on that website? Now I'm looking at the official the the, the box. The, the the included sensor, the ones we read, it says clear A scent will eliminate all odors instantly, which that's not how odors work. <laughs> right. Uh, an available sense online for purchase. It gives a slightly different uh, set from what we read. Napalm. <laughs> Human exertion. That, I guess that's, that's sports it. arena. That's the one. Human exertion. <laughs> yeah. Ocean, which was there, and golf course. Am I supposed to like put this thing in my lap? I'm not sure these guys understand how particle diffusion works. I just, in air. Well, they, they have a picture of it like spritzing out up the top, so I presume it just uses a lot. I just want to focus on one part of this product page, okay? Okay? You got all this, right? And it's showing all this, but let me, let me just help you notice something What is this? that they put. <laughs> what? I was. I, why would they do that? I was too caught up looking at the contents of the box, which you can see on one of the pictures. Uh huh. Top contents: atomizer. Yeah, it atomizes it. That's <laughs> yeah, the term. I know. <laughs> don't put your hand in there. No, don't. What? A, what a nightmare device that everyone universally seems to think would be very funny to be on Wave Five. How very, very <laughs> funny. Wave four, fuck you, it's Sonic Buds. Wave five, fuck you, it smells weird. <laughs> God, this will kill me. <laughs> yes! If there's one confirmed thing, if we lock you in a death stream with the game set, you're just gonna be clawing at the walls to get out. <laughs> <laughs> we hook it up, we hook Banjo it up. Banjo Tui playthrough, whatever smells it decides that smells like is what, what happens. <laughs> no, no, DMC the DMC. I want to know what it God, thinks Dante so much, smells like. So much gunfire in cars and oh, what a nightmare. Oh my God, no, no, DMC Dante just, he, that that boy smells foul. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's ever yeah, you based. Have to, you have to include a, a escape clause where it's like, yeah, as long as we can take, the stream will have to end if it goes too far so we can air out the room. Yeah, yeah. This is like medically yeah. dangerous, right? To death stream. Yeah, yeah we're, they don't have seem to have like ingredients for these gases. Oh well, the blood one's blood. <laughs> Is that a we, problem? We, we ground up pennies into a fine dust and suspended them in cooking oil. <laughs> this has reviews from last December. Did they release this last December and only now started marketing it? I assume I assume it was a uh, like a like a pre-done thing it, it the reviews on amazon though they're like ai and then that's when everyone cared they're like oh ai jeff AI. keely Ooh. tweeted maybe about they us just now. Did, maybe they just didn't do like a uh what a nightmare product i'm looking at the reviews 
by the early ones, and it seems like they give everything a five, so I don't really believe they're real. Uh -huh. Yeah, no, they're almost certainly not real. Okay, we got to talk about this, though. Okay, everyone, close your eyes. Don't think of anything we just said. What is the worst scent this could come with? Okay. Okay. Think about it. Okay, I have an image from the website. <laughs> now that looks like a woman who doesn't know if it's raining. Yeah, I was about to say this the the second haze playthrough. <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe someone's selling this. What is fucking wrong with you? Why would you Oh my, oh my god. god. You, Dan, you need you need to set up a bunch of like point redemption sounds that you don't hear but feed directly into the machine. <laughs> Man, we're getting... Yes, do it, Dan. I'm on Agra's side. <laughs> it's just outputting a live level stereo jack into the thing and Chad just gets to keep hitting a button that's like, piss. No, no. That's my mom. That's my mom. That's my mom. What a fucking nightmare. What a nightmare. Why would... <laughs> Why is that on your product page? Why why yellow? <laughs> Tinted a different color for the fucking picture, bro. Oh man. All right. <sighs> oh, we're at the segment. Oh no, is it yes, all we, we have left? Why? One moment. Let me just check. Did, did, did breaking news happen? Maybe. Maybe there's something cool that just came up. Probably not. Though. Can we talk no, about I'm how sorry. funny that Apple Car thing was again? We this could talk about funny. the Pokemon Presents first. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We got that. Let's do it. Uh, do you want me to talk about it? You got it, or I didn't watch it. So. Oh okay. Yeah, you, yeah. I, I got all the news either, out of it. So I was like, okay. Ahead. Okay. Uh, they talked about the Pokemon trading card game for mobile devices called Pope Pokemon Trading Card Game Pocket. Going to be on iPhones and uh, on the Google Play Store. And this is going to be like, I guess you can. It has battling trading cards, opening packs, and a new thing called immersive cards. Where it has the card art, but they've done extra art that goes around it, and you can actually like explore it. Like it shows the camera pan inside the card, and you see other artwork that's in a similar style, and you get oh. to like look around. Well, that's neat. Yeah, I was like, that's pretty cool. Uh, you get two free packs a day. Uh, they're making this with the Pokemon Company, Creatures Inc., and Dina. Yeah, okay. Uh, which I guess Creature Inc. is the guys who do the card game to begin with, so that makes sense. I mean, they're a third of who owns Pokemon. Hmm. The three companies are the Pokemon Company, Creatures Inc., and Nintendo. Right. They in this direct, they were very specific about the Creatures Inc. guys are the ones who do the regular card game. Okay. I don't know. I might give I might yeah. give this a shot. Pokemon's like the only big card game I have absolutely zero experience with. Oh, really? Huh. Yeah, I never played the Pokemon trading card game. I only played Magic and Yu-Gi-Oh. I, I should say they were very it doesn't seem like there's like the full rules game in here. They yeah. have a thing they're calling quick battle. Right, they said it yeah. has streamlined game rules for quicker battles, and I'm like, what does that mean? How I much know, are you but I'm really, this? I'm really fascinated, right? That's, like, will this still smart, hit the like, buttons for people? They probably like just, like, problem. rip the energy cards out and shorten the prize pack thing. And mm. Yeah. Like, I, I remember my, like, my huge problem with, with Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel is, like, this sure takes too long. Yeah. Yeah, it, not a just lot takes of... too long, but there's so many steps where it has to be like, they're doing this. Are you doing something? Yes, no. They're doing this. Are you doing something? Yes, no. They're doing this. And that happens like 18 times so, a turn sometimes. So are they going to have a Bangrass soundtrack for this, like the Game Boy Color game? <laughs> they better. I wouldn't count on it. Um, and yes, for everyone who's listening and doesn't get to see chat pop off, that was Sticky Keys activating because I was holding shift. <laughs> cool mm -hmm. i was wondering yeah um so that that could be cool yeah no i'm really interested in that um then the other thing they announced during this was pokemon legends z to a uh it comes out in 2025 all oh, right the pokemon card game comes out this year sometime we don't know when 
Uh, but Legends Siege A, uh, set in Lumino City. We don't really know anything else. It's so it's within it's the an urban urban redevelopment plan was mentioned. Like we this, I doubt this will even be structured anything like Arceus. Yeah, it does seem like Legends. I I I'm now taking is more of like no. This is what they call the ones when they're test. Uh, it's a test bed for a new game, <laughs> mm-hmm. or it's just like this is our name for spin for spinoffs now. We want to make some kind of weird spinoff that doesn't fit the generations style mm-hmm. game so yeah here's a here's our spinoff and maybe it actually will be pokemon z that'd be funny yeah but the idea of a game that takes place in a pokemon game that takes place in, entirely inside a city is pretty fascinating right um yeah this news has me popping off like this is great fantastic they're, um, they're launching a, a console with like some new cryptid pokemon game mm-hmm. just put the gun in your mouth sony <laughs> But yeah, this this is on the Switch as well. Yeah, it's coming to Nintendo Switch systems. Yes. A phrase they've used a lot. So don't think that assume, don't think that means they are definitely putting it out on the Switch too. Mm-hmm. Because they've used that language to describe the three different models of Switch that already exist. That's true. But I'm sure that I'm sure it will have a version on the oh, Switch too. Oh, I'm sure it will boot into an optimized mode. We already had rumors about the last game <laughs> doing that. So that seems obvious. That's cool news. I'm really excited. Yeah, no, this is neat. They they both did something. They announced something both I would never expect of them and made me excited. Good job. Yeah, they skipped Gen 5 entirely, which uh, is a fan, fan of Gen 5. I'm excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that Gen 5 remake was something hanging down up upon me from above, like the Sword of Damocles. Uh-huh. I was not jazzed about that. And then they just went, whatever, we don't even want to deal with Gen 5. And I'm like, good, yes, please keep ignoring it. Yeah. Um, there are rumors going around, like people trying to figure out what it is. Some people think it's set during like the 1800s, like what would be the uh, like France actually being built almost or, or the Paris being built almost. That'd be neat. But the term urban redevelopment plan is a very modern term. Right. So it also could well be in the future or present day and just, you know, restoring it. Um. But yeah, I'm excited for whatever this is. Yeah. I no, that's like hype. legend. I liked Arceus a lot. Mm-hmm. Like that was a really good. Yeah, this this Pokemon trailer game. has modern looking buildings in it, guys. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's it, unfortunately. Yeah, that, that, that this no, is, I'm this sorry. is like 12 minutes that, long. Oh. No, I'm Oh, that's all for Pokemon, but I think yeah. Dan is trying to avoid hell. No, I'm not, no, no, I was just saying it's time. Yeah, bring in our special guest. Okay, one second. We gotta, we gotta bring him back up. <laughs> Bigger. <laughs> there, that's good enough. It's time for the industry burning down block. Now, la- last week Dan was very excited and optimistic for Twisted Metal. Do you have to say it? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that game has been canceled. Uh, Which means that we're at the point where these games are like, Sony is looking at them and saying, we won't make enough to justify shipping them. Even something that's seemingly months away from launch. So, Fair Games and Concord, not fucking safe at all. No. Infuriate. Uh, yeah. London. They, London. Wait, so the, real quick. They fucking made a Twisted Metal show to raise the notoriety, the the uh, imaging of Twisted Metal so people would be interested in the game. They greenlit that for a second season. They greenlit it and then canceled the game. Yeah. So the, the, that they proved that, that the franchise was profitable. And, and people still care and then just... Mm. I hope now that it's canceled, we get some leak on like what it was. Like, yeah, this was like some really poorly thought out service nightmare. It better be that. It better be like I. Oh, don't worry, I, we avoided the worst timeline. Like, I don't see. I like. I can't see them canceling anything resembling a. Nor did you disappear yourself because you don't want to be seen anymore, Dan? <laughs> uh, I can't see it being like this was a normal twisted metal game, but we just killed it because. Who knows? God. 
Uh, but Lo uh, Sony London has been shut down and 900 employees total have been fired from various PlayStation Studios. Uh -oh. Insomniac got hit. Naughty Dog got hit. One second. OBS is crashing. <laughs> oh, no. Uh oh, we're back. We're still good. Chris Are we? Amazing. Yeah, we're supposed to be. Chat, chat's doing fine. The OBS window's no longer highlighted. I wonder how that'll sound on the recording. I mean, I, I, you're gone, and ag I'm kind of piled on top of aggro with Bob. Why is Bob? <laughs> yeah, I'm all the way over why, here. Why did, <laughs> why did that happen? We're tactical now, boys. This is a speed team, stacked up and ready to go. <laughs> yeah, we're okay. forming a fucking phalanx. <laughs> <laughs> Why did Bob shove over that much? That doesn't make sense with any of the things that happened. Look, I'll keep look. I'll keep talking while Dan tries to figure this out. <laughs> look, we're just getting the just black gone. Pro, the black tristars. We're just gonna we gotta be streamlined. <laughs> Bob, look out! The guy has a gun. He's pointing it at you. <laughs> oh no! Uh, Insomniac got hit. Naughty Dog got hit. Fire Sprite got hit. Um. Before we move on, London Studio, they were making another live service game that was announced. They were working on some fantasy modern day thing with dragons. And it sounded cool. It did sound cool. And that's gone. Yeah. That was the only one of these live service games. I was like, oh, that might be neat. God. Also, like a week ago or so, the employees from there posted a picture with Jim Ryan. And yeah, like, that's fucking disgusting. <sighs> you motherfucker. You knew that that was coming. Why? How dare you? Yeah, that's terrible. <sighs> nightmare, 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 nightmare. Yeah. You know, if I saw the crash of the AAA space and started shutting down a bunch of live service games, my thought would be, hey, we better green light a bunch of AA games uh -huh. we can fill this space with to give people unique reasons to come to PlayStation. Maybe we need these some people here to do that, right? Yeah. yeah it's it's yeah. so insane to see, like, clip, see things from a decade ago of Sean Layden being like, yeah, this game did, wasn't the biggest seller, but that wasn't the point. Compare that to, to fucking Jim Ryan being like, I am a robot. A game only matters if it's sold a lot. Yep. Like, if you, if you want to see a clear delineation of how we got to this point, just look at, compare Sean Layden to Jim Ryan. Yeah, I will never stop being pissed. People keep crediting Sean Layden's accomplishments. And other people's accomplishments to Jim Ryan. It's like, no, cinematic AAA Sony that sells really well was not him. No, not for a second. He came in after all of that shit was green light and almost done. If not completely done. Good Lord. What an asshole. But we have other layoffs. Uh, Deck Nine, the developers of Life is Strange, Before the Storm, and True Colors, so the weird spinoff and the third one, are laying off 20% of their workforce. We don't have numbers, but that's... They said, yeah, 20% of people are gone. Uh, super massive developers of Until Dawn are laying off 90 employees with as many as 60 more to follow, so if all of these people get laid off, that's 40% of, of super massive. God. Oh, yeah, that... that Supermaster makers of Until Dawn, the game that they're currently remaking at Sony. I don't even know if these guys are working for Sony anymore, though. Uh, Herman Hulse put out a thing. He's like, yeah, we have to change the way we make games because we're not being as profitable anymore. Can you believe that a $300 million game that takes five years to make isn't as prof profitable as a $100 million game that takes three years to make? Can you You're believe blowing. that that... You're blowing my mind. No way. <laughs> there, there's no way anybody could have foreseen that being true in, in a reasonable amount of time. God, what a surprise. EA I still can't believe they hit Insomniac with cuts after... That's, that's fucked insane. up! Yeah. Guys, we saw their fucking release schedule. You have them releasing something like every other year for the next decade. They just re what the released an insanely profitable game. That is a weight-bearing studio, you dumb shits. Right? What's wild is we're, we're, we're not even at the end yet. Like, after all these layoffs, I, I can't wait to see the enormous C-suite pay cuts that happened to try and right this ship. Just, right? Um, sure. Uh, Guys, uh -huh. sure. top executives getting paid a little bit less to maybe save some of these fucking jobs? I think, actually, um, 
In that America? did happen at Supermassive. I might be remembering wrong. It might have been Deck Nine. I forgot to write it down, but one of those two did were like, yeah, the, the leadership took pay cuts so the layoffs could be smaller. No, Jim Ryan needs a, all of his final paycheck. All of his final paycheck. Yeah, it'll be the last one he cashes. Because I'm coming for him. <laughs> do, 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 do. Uh, EA is laying off 670 people and will be some sunsetting some games and moving away from franchise IPs that aren't successful enough. Uh, Respawn Star Wars FPS, which was likely a game starring a Mandalorian character, maybe not necessarily the Mandalorian. How? Um, was canceled. Less, How? less successful game. The best-selling game last year was Star Wars in the title. Was, yeah, uh, but, but, but our single-player the, the, the single first-person shooter we shipped that year bombed. Oh... <sighs> Yeah, the one made by a brand new studio, not Respawn, makers I'm, of some of the best first person shooters we've ever seen. God. I'm, I'm gonna, like, and I've already seen, I, I already saw, I forgot, it, it, they, they're people who don't matter, thankfully, being like, well, this is what happens when single player games aren't supported. To which I respond, if a company doesn't have anyone there capable of looking at a project, ideally this should happen before you spend $120 million making it. But at the bare minimum, you should be able to look at the project after it has failed and go, oh, it failed for reasons X, Y, and Z, and be right. Right. Uh -huh. To have any idea why things happen. That's your job. That's how you're supposed to be successful at business. But all of these companies hadn't had to meaningfully compete with each other in so long. They have no idea why any of their shit succeeds. None of these people have ever had a hand in making any of this shit. I... I have a bold statement. If you took me and an industry analyst and you gave us both the same information on, let's say, 10 upcoming games mm -hmm. and had us predict how much each would sell, I would, I would have a 100% success rate versus the analyst. I would be so... Just ballpark. Give us a ballpark on how much it'd sell. I'd be so much fucking closer than him. Them, mm -hmm. yeah. It wouldn't be a single one. I think any of us would. Yeah, yeah. Like, you look at the game. Okay, it's this. Here's footage of it. Here's what they've got going on. Here's our marketing plan. I can look at it and be like, okay, you're probably going to sell this much. Yeah, you, you, we see a single screenshot from Immortal of Avium and hear the title. It's like, it's not going to sell a copy. We made fun of that game from the moment we saw it until release. Yeah. Like, it will sell zero copies was our joke, and it sold zero copies. And then, and then the people who made it tried to come up with insane reasons why it sold zero copies. And it's like, no, you don't understand. You made the most dripless thing ever. You're practically beef jerky. You're so dehydrated. Your game has nothing for no one. And yeah, anyone game, can see that. And and a lot of those guys, they seem to have the mindset of, well, our game shouldn't have put anybody off. And it's like, it has to put somebody on. Right. <laughs> our game was inoffensive. How romantic. <laughs> this, isn't, this isn't 1970s TV. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it turns out people have other options. <laughs> uh, there was some kind of single-player Battlefront front experience that was in development. That's canceled. Bioware safe, inexplicably. And I'm willing to bet money that, that part of their plea for mercy was like, look at how much Baldur's Gate 3 sailed. Dragon Age is kind of like that. You oh, forced yeah. us to make it a terrible action game, but we still have party members and, and, and dialogue. Uh -huh. Please, mm. let us ship that game. So they're they're safe until until EA shuts down more studios next year. Assuming they actually get Dragon Age out, out this year, which they fucking keep promising they will. Their big thing, their the, the last big thing was summer. So we will reveal it in summer. We promise. Embracer has sold Saber Inter Interactive to private investors for five hundred million. This includes multiple other embracers, uh, embracer subsidiaries such as 3D Realms and Slipgate Ironworks, and they apparently they have the option to pay more to get more subsidiaries. Embracer just isn't going to exist in a couple of years. Like it won't exist. Like they're going to sell off everything they can sell off and go away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they were they were more so of an long, event limited for the company. run. Yeah. I feel like somebody will buy limited run. I mean, they're going to be publishing the new Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Where do you think where do you think Crystal Dynamics and Eidos Montreal end up? It's either going to be Amazon or Microsoft. Like they're both working on Microsoft things right now. Right. Which is why I say Microsoft. Man, it's messed up that they sold some of these after having done layoffs. Uh-huh. Like from, yeah. From well, they have to them. do layoffs to make them more desirable to be put, to be bought. Mm-hmm. It's called Every, burn and churn. Yeah, everything's working great. <laughs> what a healthy way this of isn't, life. This isn't a crash due to semantic reasons. Yeah. If it was a crash, I would have already read about it in history books. <laughs> <laughs> This can't be the lost generation. I'm just here in the 90s in Japan. <laughs> uh, and in a little bit of good news, maybe, I don't really think it's, I think it's neutral. Uh, Toys for Bob is going to be an independent studio now. They're splitting off from Activision. Somebody, like, got them out. A private investor apparently went in and pulled them out. Great. Thank you, God. You're a saint. I hope things go well. Any other news? <sighs> They're, they they might still do work for Microsoft, like We're publishing, fucked. which is like, that makes sense. They own both franchises you ever worked on. Uh, uh, Crash Team Rumble's done. Like, it's it's not getting any more updates. It will remain live, but that's it. Yeah, I guess it's they, they hey, I think they said all of the season passes ever are just up now. Hey, remember when it leaked that Spyro was going to be in that, and then they never actually delivered that? Yeah. Sony, Microsoft's real stupid, and they're desperate for money right now. Just go buy Crash and Spyro from them. <laughs> oh, they should. I feel like if there's one or two IPs, they might actually feel confident enough to make that are from the PS1 generation. Those are them, right? Sony. Sony's so stubborn. Uh huh. They're like old, old game. No one cares. They might care if it's actually I, Crash it's, Bandicoot. If they get, they can't rid of Jim. If they find someone who knows what video games are, literally think- anyone replacing Jim Ryan is an upward trade. There has never been someone so incompetent as him at Sony. Right? I, like it's got to be after he's gone because it happens right now, and it's like I mean, one he's week be on gone big- in a month. Yeah. But if it happens right now, next week's big thing is going to be, oh my god, they bought Crash and Spyro. Ne- the week after that is going to be, oh my god, they're making PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale again. I don't, e- I don't even think Jim Ryan is making decisions anymore. I think that's already the Hiroki Totoki is like acting CEO. The moves this week to fire find 900 people uh, line up with his comments from a week earlier. That's yeah for sure. But yeah, no, I, literally, there's never been a CEO worse at Sony than Jim no. Ryan, so. Like, it, it, it's astounding how fast that if you put, if you put some weird, if you put someone who is a completely soulless business person or a tech guy, which is somehow worse, if you put either of those guys, it's, it's insane how fast they can hollow out a company. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's really like, impressive. I, I don't labor under the delusion that Sean Layden deeply loved games beyond more than money. Because you, you can't become a, a CEO of a giant corporation and have that mindset. Unless it's Nintendo, somehow. Because <laughs> I would actually believe that about Iwata. Right, of course. But he still liked games and was, at least was smart enough to pretend he cared about them more than money. I mean, he had an idea how games were made and he was around it the whole time. Mm-hmm. Just like Andy House, it, it really does feel like no, you can't, you can't get like a the guy who came up. Uh, this is make this is me swinging at Reggie again. Like you can't come up with a guy who can't conceive the big New Yorker pizza to run your gaming company, and not have serious problems later on. Good God, this industry, I swear. Like you can't get an executive from fucking Adidas to come run your gaming company, and everything go go peachy. Yeah, that. It's t- we got a manager from Adidas to, to run several GameStops. That wasn't a good idea. <laughs> Man, I, I, went, I picked up my copy of, of Rebirth today from GameStop, Uh huh. which I don't, for the record, uh, chat, don't ask me about it because I don't intend to play it. I intend to give it at least two weeks in case there's a Final Fantasy 16 tier. Oh, right. Motion blur. We should let you turn that off. 
Right. Which thing, is like a, what happened with 16. Reasonable expectation that something like that will happen. I, I had to scream as the f GameStop clerk successfully tricked someone into buying a disc warranty. If you don't know, if Chad, if you're, if you're, don't keep track. First of all, Blu-ray discs are a lot more durable than DVDs. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about scratching. Two, they hardly ever spin. Mm -hmm. They're mostly a digital key. After they install the data off them, they're mostly a digital key. So please do not buy a warranty for a retail game. Ever. Yeah, I was surprised when, when I had customers who actually wanted that because their kids couldn't take care of anything and they just tore up the literally. <laughs> like, no, this is obviously they were trying to break it. Wait a second, Chris. We actually have a picture of you from that GameStop. <laughs> yeah, that's how it felt. Like, I, I couldn't... <laughs> I couldn't jump. It felt so inappropriate for me to jump in, but it's like, kid, you're getting scammed out of $5. Right. Like, yep. you're just setting it on, just set it on fire. Did I ever tell the story about how I saw a dad actually get a refund from a GameStop? No. Like, he made them roll back, like, a Game Informer subscription mm -hmm. because he literally threatened violence on them. Mm-hmm. Because he sent in his kid, it was like it was like, oh, my son's like you know twelve or whatever. Oh, He's yeah, gonna go in and and they this. tricked him, the, the, the tricked him into not buying a game, into buying a a, a GameStop oh, Pro membership thing. Yeah, he went in there like, I'll fucking kill you. Yep. Yeah. You give my fucking kid their money back. We're never coming here again. Yep. Gee, yep. I wonder why GameStop's going out of business and won't be here in a couple years. Yep. Because not only do they not have a well-trained staff that's knowledgeable of the thing they're selling, they're literally incentivized to become monsters like they were in that story and the other story you told just now. It's really great. Anyways, how many Funko Pops will you be picking up today? <laughs> every, they, they, every single Funko Pop they had was on a buy one, get two clearance shelf. Uh-huh. Yeah. I, I, almost did, I almost did buy a stupid fucking thing. God damn. I didn't though, uh -huh. because I was like, I, I it was it was a two hundred and fifty piece so Mario it's called, jigsaw puzzle. Oh, uh, okay. So it's called game set. <laughs> no, you're so gonna test that for me. I'm sure it'll God work so it. well when you test it that me and Agro will both get one. Bob was... will want one for his house. Jesus. <laughs> hey, Bob. What scent is your uh, is your uh, is the laundry detergent? What's the scent of your laundry? Uh, this is scentless. Oh, why is that? Because I hate the artificial smells. Oh, really? I wonder how much you will love Game Set. I'm sure it'll be great. <laughs> you ever just your, wish your Xbox would go gas <laughs> and the whole room smells like blood? <laughs> okay, so there has to, Dan, there has to be two Game Scent goals on Wave 5. There has to be two. default Game Scent, and then there has to be. You go, you you look up the goofiest fucking scent because the, there no. you can fill the chambers with whatever you just no. look, look, whatever ones you think would be funny to have sprayed <laughs> in your face and just put them in the bottle. No, <laughs> and be like, oh, we oh we're all shooting six guns with Mountain Dew. <laughs> we'll yeah, we're broken. shooting, we're shooting the guns. Here, here's cheer wine. <laughs> yeah, we filled, we filled it with Mountain Dew. Bob blasted cheer wine. Jesus. This this uh, six one's literally straight alcohol. If it tries to atomize it, it will burst into flame. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's one of those hollow. There's one of those Fourth of July ash snakes in this one. If it tries to atomize <laughs> it, it will just explode at the top. <laughs> you know you know we're having a lot of fun fantasizing about you getting one and the fun it will have. I bet in like a week there'll be reviews like this thing doesn't fucking work at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was Probably. like, if we get the game sent, we have to do a deranged video game for it. So what, Manhunt? Oh my god. <laughs> Conquer again. No, no. <laughs> Dude, that's weird. Why does my game set have shit? <laughs> Who put shit in this? <sighs> Anyways, that's it for the news, right? We're clear? Yeah, that's everything. We're in the clear. Hey, our friend can leave now. Bad. I... Every one of those, that's everything in that. Yeah. And the, just the Sony is also going along with all of these, these yeah. mass layoffs. It's like, what are you doing? This is insane. This industry is doomed. 
Could, could we possibly split up uh, these teams instead of just piling all of these 900 people into pre-existing projects? Could we divide them into smaller projects that would come along? Like, reminder, Microsoft's biggest win last year was Hi-Fi Rush. Man, Sony, you sure could make a bunch of games that scale fairly easily uh -huh. with 900 people. Yeah, you could sure, you could sure, okay, okay, like 300 people from Sucker Punch. Make another Sly Cooper. Yeah. Hey, smaller amount of people for from Insomniac. Make us a ratchet before 2029. This industry is depressing. And the Switch 2 doesn't launch this year. At least we're getting great games from Japan. <laughs> And that's about it. Oh my god, I can't think of one good game coming out of America or any Europeans this year. Yeah, we're getting DLC for Alan Wake 2. That's not a game. That's, <laughs> that's about all I can think of, though. Yeah. I... And, and one last thing about this. like, Part of the reason that no Japanese companies are being affected like this is one, as many people have talked about, and we have talked about a combination of legal protections and an un a cultural climate that makes this sort of thing unacceptable. Mm -hmm. That's one. Uh -huh. Two is they don't overhire for reasons. One. Yeah. Three is they're not tech companies. Every of every American gaming, every Western gaming company is a tech capital T tech company. Now, which means they're susceptible to the tech thing of, well, one person's doing layoffs. We all better do it. Yeah. Like, that's what happened when the metaverse shit collapsed. Like, companies that didn't have any, that didn't put a ton of money into the metaverse, they didn't have any reason to fire huge groups of people over, over that, but Facebook fired, like, 4,000 people. So we better do some, you know, political layoffs, you know, to show that we, we support them ideologically. Like, that's what happened with those Microsoft layoffs around the same time. It was literally just, well, I guess it's time to do layoffs. Uh, by the way, companies acting like that is one of the biggest signs that there's about to be a market crash. Huh. Weird. But it's not a crash because I haven't read about it in history books. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's not, it won't be like the first crash, which was mostly isolated to America and didn't affect Japanese or European gaming companies uh, so much. What? There's no way there'll be a second crash what? that uh, is mostly isolated to America and doesn't affect Japanese or european companies so much america's too powerful they can't that can't happen with them with us as a base <laughs> so so about how sony fucked up when they made playstation more gl globally managed group yes uh oops maybe 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 they'll roll that back a little also, I'm going to need everyone to stop going, here's my counter to no AAA, AA space games coming out of the Western. Look at all these really tiny indies. And I'm like, we're not talking about them. No, they're, they're not. They'll be we're fine. We're not talking they're about not Delta Rune 3 and 4 when we talk about EA exploding and Sony First Party exploding. We're talking about everything above that. Because indie groups, not sure if you knew this, they aren't owned by a giant mega core they aren't tied into the normal financial structures they're not as susceptible to these sorts of things they are still susceptible at some level but yeah this is i can't believe how quickly we started coming into this weird armageddon situation where i'm winning because the double a you know indie games are coming on the rise and triple a has exploded when's the next time a triple a game ships out of the west can anyone name it Assassin's K Creed Red. <laughs> What's the name I of mean, the protagonist, Bob? Ducky Jones. <laughs> I mean, Assass Assassin's Creed Red, maybe if they ship it. Star Wars Outlaws, maybe if they ship it. Uh, Dragon Age 4, maybe if, if they, they ship, ship it. it. <laughs> uh, Indiana Jones. <laughs> Which I wouldn't say it doesn't seem like it's going to be AAA, so maybe I shouldn't even count it. I mean, it's it's a, it's AAA. It's not Sony AAA, but it's AAA. Like, is and that, that's supposed is to ship this year. Yeah, okay. I keep thinking it's next year, but I guess not. They and, say this year, but it's probably. 
Oh, and that, avowed that, avowed. That, nobody avowed that nobody alive seems to think will be good except us and Ryoko Kui, yes. mangaka of, of Delicious in Dungeon. <laughs> Everybody yeah. else seems to think that game's going to be terrible. Every single person, who, huge Obsidian fans I talked to is like, what do you think? And they're like, it's over. It looks like shit. We're done. I don't like, get why. But, what is promoting that? What causes this mindset? <laughs> they put out a sigil. You guys didn't notice. It's just like I don't it understand. It's people. like it's like the combat will be bad, but the combat of every Western RPG ever made was bad, is bad. Yeah, this one at least the world's really really colorful. It has cool like creature biodiversity and the environments look neat. I don't know. This looks awesome. I I don't. And I'll be right there with you if you show they show us a skill tree and it's like. Blue magic does five percent more damage. No, 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 no. Usually we're way on worse than that. If your combo is ten or higher, blue damage has a five percent chance uh, to raise your damage by four percent. I'm actually directly referencing the sort of stuff that were skill points in uh at the Outer Worlds. Oh. Oh. It, oh. Yeah, that was actually one of my huge problems with that game. Is that it's like, okay, but you 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 gassed up that like this is like Fallout, and then you don't have the really funny. These are a perk and also a character building, like a characteristic of the character you're playing. Mm -hmm. Like you're you're really good at jury rigging, so you can repair things with completely wild components. Or win a trial. You or you <laughs> or you love wearing sunglasses, so you now take less damage from laser weapons because they reflect off your shades if you're wearing them. That is pretty great. But yeah, Space Marines too. Stalker. Oh yeah, Space I Marine too. I I don't. I hope that launches this year. I it feel is. like they said it would. I think but, both of those are supposed to. But yeah, I th again, yeah. if they launch it, Stalker, but, I feel like is going to ship. But, but like, I, guys, yeah, I mean, feel like going to slip. How yeah. has this? How I feel like this might be unprecedented. We're in February. We don't know when the next Western AAA game ships, like at all. Also, I no offense, but I don't know. Stalker two AAA. Yeah, the, even they like, were like, would you consider it that? And I'm like, I'll allow it for this argument because it's the closest we're getting. Yeah, I don't know. This is... Uh, this is, this I, is uh, I, I think we should argue that any game that is day one Game Pass that isn't owned by Microsoft is by default not AAA. Because <laughs> if it was, it wouldn't be day one Game Pass. <sighs> Anyways, that's it for the news segment. Uh, as we mentioned before, uh, tomorrow Bob and I will be streaming Sonic Adventure 2 with Sardalene. It's going to be a really great time. I hope you stop by. I love Sonic Adventure 2. Did you know it actually came out before Mario Sunshine? So my playthrough of Mario Sunshine early this week will inform my opinion on Sonic Adventure 2. And we'll be playing the original on the Dreamcast. So Ooh. it will be good. Ooh. It will be the correct, the good. I and forget, does that run at 60? Or it's it, supposed to, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is, uh, is is Sonic Ad Adventure 2 Battle real scuffed up? I thought uh, yeah. it was mostly the first one that was real scuffed yeah, up. Yeah, the GameCube's a little scuffed up. Uh, there's cutscene changes and a couple other lighting things that are just weird. Mm. Um, yeah, it's weird. I've seen comparison videos uh, a while ago. Um, Sonic Adventure 1's completely fucked. Yeah. That you can tell while playing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and on Saturday I'm doing the Donathon stream for my birthday, where you will, where I will probably instantly end up inside Bart's nightmare, and then after that, probably instantly end up inside Namco High. You might, in fact, have to eat pant. <laughs> maybe, and yeah, then bro. somehow, oh, maybe after that, we'll end up inside Banjo Nuts and Bolts. But that seems like a lot in one day to end <laughs> up at. Okay, so I have these assets hidden. And one of them is this picture. Okay. Okay. And the other one's this picture. Don't don't do this. And there there's one of these is the good ray tracing. <laughs> okay, I can I, I can tell now. I can tell which one's the good ray tracing, I think. Okay. Let's see if my arrogance. Okay, this is one. And this is two. That's two. One, two is the good ray tracing. Two. One. Two. One. two is the good ray two. tracing. One, two. Bob? Yeah, I think it's also two. So that's one, two. One, two. So you think it's two? Yeah. Hey, Agra, one. 
number two. I like one better, so I'm going to go with that. I think it's two because you could see the uh, reflection. I'll zoom in to make it easier. The the blue reflection uh, on the sidewalk. Of right. it, that's Literally. also how I was able to tell. Because every single time I've been wrong, Dan has been like, look, it slightly reflects the color off this other surface in a way that is sort of realistic. And I'm like, wow, that's sure not worth having 90 frames a second fewer. Have you guys have you guys seen that the 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 uh the Max Payne ray tracing mod and like in the comparison yeah. screenshot the, yeah. the the un the unmodded game is running at like 900 frames a second on modern hardware and then it's like ray tracing 48 <laughs> Yeah, that made me laugh so fucking hard. I was like, it can't be that bad. And then sometimes I ran at over a thousand. It's <laughs> forty-eight. Like you got. It. Now, admittedly, that is via the weird RTX remake stuff, which injects it in the middle of it. So that's not as efficient as you could from the ground up make uh, a max pain. Uh huh. I have to clarify. But holy shit! <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Oh, uh, you know what? We talked about this on stream. I'm going to go ahead and bring it up here in the comment section. You can talk about it. I want to hear my co-host's opinion. We were talking about with the PS5, it was obvious what Sony needed to fix. Get the CPU to be strong enough to run games at 60. Get the GPU to sort of support ray tracing and get the loading to load fast. Hey, guys, what the hell is the PS6's obvious thing it will fix for the PS5? Better ray tracing. <laughs> That's not... <laughs> That's all it is. That's... Anyone? Can anyone think of the thing that end users use the PS5 and go, oh man, this should be. Because all of those yeah, things they're... are end user apparent. Uh -huh. All the games are running at 30. Yeah. The games take too long to load. Yeah, the temporal AA, which is supposedly going to be fixed with the PS5 Pro. Uh huh. And I guess they could fix more with the PS6. Yeah, that's it. Like this it, ray tracing it'll be doesn't basically fix the rectangular. problem. Rectangular. <laughs> yeah, that. See, that's a, a somebody who is somebody who isn't a soulless, artless hack like Jim Ryan won't look at it and have to approve it, so it can maybe have anything resembling soul. I'd be like, what if we tried to be Apple? I mean, the problem with the current one is that it's too curvy. So if anything, we're hopefully trending back towards a normal flat bottom thing right I like want make the, it a I sphere want the or bring the vcr back i uh, yeah i want the ps5 pro to look like a fucking vcr if it does will I you buy it i'm gonna buy it anyway dan oh okay well i'm like oh boy i got the ps5 pro it's gonna fix the temporal way and all of these where did all the games go <laughs> and I'm, like, no! I'm like oh good Maybe it'll make Final Fantasy VII Rebirth look better. I mean, that's incredibly <laughs> likely. Um, I wanted to be maybe it'll, twenty maybe... inches wide and shaped like the fucking Pentagon building. <laughs> maybe, maybe it'll make maybe it'll make Dragon's Dogma two run at sixty frames a second. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, okay. There we go. Uh, Big Nerd Saving Chat. They'll digitize your movies, make them look better via the digital. Finally. <laughs> Finally, I've been waiting for a console to do that for three generations now. Thank you, PS6. You're so based. Get Q Games on making an OS again. Do oh, it. yeah. Q Games should make your UI. Like, that's... Because for people so who don't better. know, they made the PS3, the PS4, I think, and the Vita OS. I thought that they didn't even... They did something on PS4, but they didn't do the whole user experience so like they did maybe, on the others. So maybe I'm thinking... I think they did that one, too. But it, 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 it was PSP... PS3, Vita. Yeah. Yeah, I think that might have been yeah. PS4 as well. But yeah, no, this PS5 interface just feels like an ad. Like there's no drip and it feels like an ad. Mm -hmm. What the fuck? <laughs> Chat. What if they made Rebirth purposefully run worse so it looks better when the Pro comes out? chat right now you that's ever about think on about par with trails? people <laughs> that's yeah, about right. on par with the people who still scream about compress your files i don't understand how big 4k assets are uh-huh uh -huh. guys if we could run but like 
look at look at Final Fantasy 16. That didn't run well. And they weren't they weren't letting that like holding that back for the pro. <laughs> Did you make Yoshi P so like they'll understand next year. <laughs> it will be so strong. <laughs> How come? How come they don't? Have, you don't have fucking themes on the PS5 yet? Uh, because the entire OS UI is designed in a way where it can't. Like the PS4 could. PS5 from the ground up, they definitely design menus and shit to not off. That's so dumb because that like all that stuff was so cool. It was. You could make it look like the PS2. You could do uh-huh. other cool anniversary yeah. stuff. Yeah. Wow. Imagine having an affection and towards your console. That I pick. No. Like it's it's almost like a desktop. Uh huh. Why would you want to? Why would you want any level of customizability and affinity towards your pieces of hardware? For personalization? No. Ads. Fuck you. You boot to see this lady in Call of Duty that's a- apparently from The Walking Dead. <laughs> I was like, all right. Thank you, Sony. I care about both of these things so much. Anyways, that's going to do it for Big Thing. We're, we're, we're going to go now. We're going to go now. Take, take it easy. Take it easy. <laughs> Actually, wait. Hey, Agro, you... <laughs> 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 Are you doing anything next week? Uh, I mean, I was I was planning to play some Helldivers tomorrow. <laughs> oh, shit! We should... But wait, that's tomorrow. I'm going to play... Ah, oh, damn it. Ah. Oh. Mm-hmm. Are you going to break into some sort of facility and what? seal? What's up? Are you going to break into some, some <laughs> sort of facility and seal uh, a Unicorn Overlord early? If, I mean, if you show me a map to that facility, <laughs> <laughs> do it, Bob. Be an accessory to greatness. <laughs> Bob, after this, do you want to get cookout? <laughs> of you, course. Okay, that's great. That's Did we did we talk about Nintendo Quest? I I'm just not sure if we because yes, that's pretty relevant to the ending. That. that came out. That content came out. Yeah, people, every, out. Okay, okay, it's that's, so bad. Right. Okay. That's. Thank you very much for listening to this episode of Big Think Dimension. Big Think Dimension is only possible because of you and your support over at patreon.com slash GB podcast, where you can enjoy our commentary track for the movie Nintendo Quest, the most unofficial, unauthorized documentary about Nintendo that really isn't a documentary. There's also early access to Chugging Bleach, 